sports psyche needing a post-World Series sweep. Pick me up. So these fans turn to the team that's been atop the Mile High City for decades. Their 3-3 three three Broncos host Brett Favre for the 5-1 Packers on Monday Night Football. Hi, everyone. Mike Tirico. So glad you're with us here in the Rockies tonight. Well, here you have Denver at 3-3. Three and three. You know they could be 0-6 real easy. All three of their wins came on last play of the game field goals by Jason Elam. That's the glass half empty. The glass half full is their young quarterback, Jay Cutler, against a good Pittsburgh team. They played his best game of his brief two-year career last Sunday night. So that promise carries the Broncos forward, thinking maybe they've come across a hurdle. But Tony Kornheiser, Ron Jaworski, Jay Cutler, and the other 88 guys in the field, they take a back seat tonight because it's Monday Night Football with a team with a 5-1 and one record and the NFL quarterback of record in Brett Favre. Well, we all know Brett Favre plays the game with great emotion, great passion. But what I love about Brett Favre at 38 years old is that little kid enthusiasm for the game. And tonight, he's going to have to muster up all the enthusiasm he can because it leads a Packer offense that is one-dimensional. They are dead last in running the football. They have no proof and running back far is going to have to carry the offense as I've broken down this team getting ready for tonight's game there were actually two games earlier this season against Minnesota and San Diego where the Green Bay Packers in 31 snaps did not even have a running back on the field so they clearly believe in throwing the football and Brett Favre on Monday night would have it no other way the burden for the Packers to move the football are on his shoulders and Tony his is a familiar face that we never really get tired of seeing. Absolutely. In a few moments, Deanna Favre will tell you why everyone loves her husband, Brett. And you're going to want to see that. Now I'm going to tell you why everyone watches him. Many athletes are great, but very few make the needle move. Very few cause you to sit in front of the TV for hours just because you don't want to miss what they do and the way that they do it. We watch Tiger Woods on Sunday in red because every shot he takes carries with it the possibility of something so great that you would hate yourself if you missed it. Like that chip in at Augusta and the fist pumps that followed it. We watched Michael Jordan in that same way because every time he held the ball in his hands, he might deliver something unforgettable like that jump shot over Craig Elo, or all those times when Jordan hung gracefully in midair like a portrait. It's the same with Favre, who at 38 now qualifies as an actual living legend. Nobody, not even Peyton Manning or Tom Brady, brings the flair that Favre does. Nobody shows more enthusiasm. He doesn't make all the crazy throws that he tries, but he'll keep trying them no matter how many times they're picked off because nothing ever discourages him. He always thinks that the next one is going for six. And that's why we give him a hall pass for all those ridiculous interceptions because Brett Favre will keep slinging and the next pass he might fit through the eye of a needle and then jump into someone's arms like a teenager. Look, you don't just get to watch Brett Favre. You have to watch him. And what did John Lynch say, the defensive back for the Broncos? You don't want to be a fan, but he's easy to watch. Speaking of Lynch, he's wearing a microphone tonight. Favre's wife, Deanna, and Vince Vaughn, the actor, in the booth. And the soundtrack for Monday Night Football provided by the Eagles. second but first we'll start with Michelle Tafoya same deal for the Broncos they've got a backfield situation as well they do Mike Denver running back Travis Henry is out with a rib injury but the Broncos never seem to have a shortage of running backs tonight Selvin Young an undrafted rookie free agent out of Texas becomes another in a long line of no name running backs to crack the starting lineup for the Broncos but will he be another diamond in the rough like sixth rounder Terrell Davis who became a three time pro bowler or sixth round Mike Anderson, who became the NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year in 2000 with 15 touchdowns, or last year's undrafted phenom, Mike Bell, who had eight touchdowns on the season. Now, Young is averaging just three carries per game, so the question is, how will he handle 20 to 25 carries as the starter tonight? Now, over to Susie. Well, Michelle and the something's got to give department. You have the Broncos and the worst rush defense in the NFL against the Packers and the worst rush offense. Since Avon Green left in free agency, this running back rotation has been in disarray. Young, inexperienced guys rotating in and out because of injuries since training camp. Mike 
McCarthy admitted to us last night, my mistake to think we could do running back by committee. That said, rookie Deshaun Wynn will not only get the start tonight, he'll carry the bulk of the load. His number one goal, be physical and play with attitude. Mike, the time is now to see a change because as Brett Favre said, the lack of balance on offense will haunt us. All right, Suze, we've got inexperience in the offensive backfield, experience in the defensive backfield, or I'll tell head-to-head, -head, Charles Woodson and Champ Bailey, two of the guys hawking the passes. You don't want to miss Deanna Favre before kickoff. Next. Who wants it more Monday night? Green Bay, Denver, or you? Hit GMC.com. We first laid eyes on you on an autumn Sunday. You, the little boy from Dixie, drawing up plays in the Mississippi mud, never growing old. All these years later, you remain as genuine as you were that day. You are ours because you stood by us, not only in triumph, but more importantly, in times of despair, celebrating timeless victories and honoring those tragically lost. As the years pass, the doubters increase in volume. He's too old. He's lost a step. It's time to go. Pay them no attention, for we are survivors. Legends write their own stories. My Brett, our Favre. Brett's wife, Deanna, uh, the future Hall of Fame quarterback, she describes as her best friend. From the death of parents to drug and alcohol treatment to her battle with breast cancer, they've shared pain, tough times spent in the public eye, yet strengthened by a seemingly inexorable bond. As she said, they are survivors. Deanna's going to join us in the booth in the second quarter. We'll wait to see her husband, Brett, take the field momentarily as the Broncos have won the toss and will receive. Goosebumps, man, that's Absolutely. unbelievable stuff. Yeah, Jaws and I, when we saw that for the first time, literally had tears in our eyes, and as we assume, almost everyone who saw it did. Absolutely right, very special. All right, Andre Hall and Glenn Martinez back deep to receive. Mason Crosby, former Colorado Buff, comes back to the Rockies, and after indecision, Hall brings it out, and is tackled at the 18-yard line by the Packers' Charlie Pepper. Well, on the other side, it is Jay Cutler. We have a penalty marker down, so we'll find out where this Broncos drive will actually start from as Cutler gets set to come out. Ron Winter is our referee tonight. After the play, personal foul, number 26 of the return team. That lies half the distance to the goal. First down. That's Paul Smith, uh, one of the backup running backs for the Broncos, so Cutler will get it started back at the nine-yard line. There is a tie between Brett Favre and Jay Cutler. They share an agent, and Cutler has gotten to meet Favre and spend some time around him, and there's another tie. So the quarterbacks call a hose, a big old arm, and they both got as good an arm as you'll find in the NFL. Yeah, it was fun. I spent some time before the game uh, with Jay Cutler and Brett Favre. They have great respect and admiration for each other. So from the nine, Cutler to work. Play action to Travis Hint, or rather to Selvin Young, and a shovel pass is incomplete. Not held on to. And that's Favre type play by Chad Mustard, the backup tight end. It's absolutely a Favre type play. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we've spent the last few days wondering is Cutler one of the heir apparents or heirs apparent to Brett Favre? And people talk about Romo, but Mike Shanahan said that he saw more in Cutler than Tony Romo. That pass is out of the Brett Favre playbook, but you see the guy catches it. Cutler in his second year, Selvin Young, the free agent, rookie from Texas behind him. Puts on the brakes and hits the tight end, Daniel Graham. The former New England Patriot, gain of a dozen. First down to the 21, Atari Bigby with the tackle. Okay, there were two big moves last year at the quarterback position, Jaws. In one, Tony Romo, who just signed a deal today, a big deal with the Cowboys. Tony Romo replaced Drew Bledsoe, led his team to the playoffs. Now that team is 6-1. and one. And the other real big move, Mike Shanahan dropped Jake Plummer for Jay Cutler, who you loved last year. You loved coming out as a rookie. He did not have the success Romo did. They're waiting for it right now in Denver. First carry for Young. 
Selvin gets around A.J. Hoff and to the 25-yard line. Wanted to lay hit as he went down. Going to mark him out at the 24, an official gain of three. Just to get back to that, what made that so unusual was that Jake Plummer had a fabulous winning percentage, right, in the regular, in the regular season, and you would just drop him, and you then miss the ball. Yeah, and, and that's the key, a winning percentage, but they never won a championship. For Mike Shanahan, it's about hoisting the Vince Lombardi trophy. He felt that the vertical game could come back to the Broncos' offense with Cutler as a quarterback and not Plummer. Maximum blockers, young, nice cutback, and that is the way you run it in Denver. Stick a foot in the ground and cut it up, and Selvin Young got it for the first down. Maybe the most famous thing Selvin Young did in his football career was throw the block for unrelated Vince Young as Texas won the national championship in the Rose Bowl a few seasons back. He was a running back at Texas who, because of an ankle injury in academics, fell off the radar a little bit, but now is getting an opportunity here because of the injury to Travis Henry. And, Mike, you could immediately see why he's got the start. He has that one foot in the ground, hit that cutback, the zone blocking scheme. His style is a good fit for the Broncos offense. And for the 32, Cutler. Hot shot held on to by the tight end Tony Scheffler. First down at the 43-yard line, a gain of 11. Tony, this is exactly what I was talking about. Sticking the throw into a very tight window. That was a laser throw right here. Look at him wind up and squeeze this ball in there. Just a great throw to Scheffler and a heck of a catch because this ball has some smoke on it. But I like the fact that he maintained his balance and mechanics of delivering that football. Moving his left, he set up properly, got his feet under him, and delivered a strike. We should say that of the class of quarterbacks in the first round with Matt Leinart and Vince Young and Jay Cutler, even before the draft, you like Cutler the most. Well, the, the, the throws I, I saw at Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt projected well to the National Football League. The sampling is still small. Time will tell. Another one receiver set here. They'll run Selvin Young to the right side. Charles Woodson takes him down. He gets to the 47-yard line. And Brandon Marshall, the receiver for the Broncos, introduces us to the rest of the offense. Okay, money, Mike. I'm about to introduce the Denver Bronco Young Guns. Up front, paving the way, you have Dewey, the Chris Cooper. Also, Daniel Graham, the boss. And out wide, yes, America, you know who he is, Brandon, the slot machine Stokely. And in the back, Cecil the Diesel Sap. And our head, our captain, Jay the Clutch Cutler. Welcome to the people missing Rod Smith, the veteran who's not played all year after his hip surgery, and Javon Walker, the former Packer, whose knee is bothering him again. Kabir Baja B. Miller and A.J. Hawk with the tackle on Young. And before the next play, Nick Barnett, the linebacker, with the intros on the Green Bay defense. On our defensive line, bringing the pressure all night is Aaron Cannon, Mr. Sackamatic himself. And stuffing the run on the defensive line is Ryan, the big picket fence. Now to probably the hardest hitting linebacking core, led by myself, A.J. the Hawkamania, Brady the Swarming Mormon. Now probably the two most underrated corners in the NFL, Al. Lock them up, throw away to Key Harris, and Charles. I just make plays with it. And we'll see if the defense makes a play as the Broncos work out of the gun for third and three. Glenn Martinez, the second year receiver, is in short motion. And against a four man rush, Cutler throws high for Martinez. Incomplete. The pressure from Kabir Baja Biamilla. Jared Bush on the coverage. And after a couple of first downs, the Broncos will punt the ball. Excellent job by the Green Bay secondary on that third down and four to go. The Denver Broncos are complete, are converting third down situations over 50%, number three in the league, a very good third down team. But the Packers really did a good job of plastering their coverage. See those impressive numbers for Sauerbrunn, averaging over 50 his last five games. Charles Woodson goes back to receive. Sauerbrunn with the big legs, see if he can put him inside the 10. Woodson will let it go. And on the bounce, it is untouched. Touchback. So only a net of 30. And Brett Favre for the Packers will take over for the 20. Get a sniff. Get ready. Because <laughs> Favre's He's coming ready. out when you come back. <laughs> <laughs> In Denver, for Brett Favre, who has uh, rewritten the NFL record book this season. More wins than anybody ever. More touchdown passes than anyone. And more attempts than anyone. History of the league. His running backs to Sean Wynn, who has 49 carries in his career. Drive start from the 20. To Donald Driver, the veteran who takes the short catch and makes some moves 
to gain four yards in front of Nate Webster, the linebacker. And Ron, you say, and you talked about all, they don't have a great pass, a running game. A lot of their running game comes out of that play like that. And, and it really was. That was a running play called. It's what we call smoke. If the corner, a la Champ Bailey, playing off Donald Driver, six or seven yards, Brett Favre will abandon the running call to stand up and throw the ball out. That time it picked up four yards. And there you see the numbers. Fewest run attempts, most pass attempts per game, NFL. Second and six, second throw from Favre. Dropped by Greg Jennings, the second year receiver out of Western Michigan. Third down coming up. Obviously, he's supposed to catch that ball. And yes, he's yeah. to the question. Now you put Favre in the third and long. Will we see the good Favre tonight or will we see the bad Favre? For three and a half games, he was fabulous. He had nine touchdowns and one interception through the first half against the Bears. From the second half against the Bears and against the Redskins, no touchdowns and four interceptions. And that's what it's all about with Brett Favre, interceptions, because he will keep throwing it. Somebody's going to catch it, either the guy on his team or the guy on the other team. Two-speed defensive ends, Elvis Doomerville and Simeon Rice in the game for Favre. Takes the snap from Jason Spitz, the reserve center, and swings it out to Ryan Grant. Champ Bailey in the open field. Green Bay, three and out. Well, we heard that the Packers have been working on their running game in their week <laughs> off. Well, how did it look to you? They threw three passes, so yeah. <laughs> you got Brett Favre, throw it. Champ Bailey didn't play last week, ready to go this week. Bailey missing the Pittsburgh game with a uh, thigh injury. It's bothered when he plants that left foot. He said it was feeling better when we saw him on practice on Saturday. And John Ryan kicks it. The second year man who uh, played in Canada for his university ball, as they call it up there. Big kick to Glenn Martinez from the 15. Good sideline return for Martinez. A 25 yard return to the 40 yard line. So it nets only 35. The kick was 61. Desmond Bishop the tackle. Own a timeshare, turn it into cash. Timeshare. Fresh air, striking scenery, spectacular place to visit and live. Red Rocks, part of that amphitheater where so many great concerts and evenings have been enjoyed by the people in Denver. And that guy who's enjoyed maybe a few too many evenings in Denver. Barrowman. Barrowman. Yeah. Barrowman had said that he was going to retire back about a decade ago, but he keeps coming back. This, he says, is his final season. <laughs> Selvin Young on the first down carry from the 40. It's about two yards. Aaron Kampman helping to bring him down. So then he's sort of like the Brett Favre of Barrowman <laughs> in that every single year we wonder, is this it? And now finally, he's just going to keep going. I think it's so. It's okay because who's better in a barrel than him, really? <laughs> he fills it out. He does, yeah. <laughs> uh, this Broncos offense, guys, they have not put a lot of points on the board. And I think people wonder, why is this an offense that has had fits and starts as the season has gone on? Well, I mentioned a few key points. No Rod Smith all year. Now Javon Walker out. So a young quarterback has some new and moving pieces surrounding him. They're coming off their best offensive game of the year against Pittsburgh last week. Against the Blitz, time for Cutler. Complete to Daniel Graham. Forward progress gives him the first down in front of Atari Bigby. Now, Cutler has outstanding mechanics. Outside the pocket, his quarterback rating is 139, best in the NFL. Here's why. Watch him lead that front foot, and he flexes the knee. Watch him flip the hip through this throw. Good mechanics lead to consistent quarterbacking. That's what you're getting out of Jay Cutler. Flip the hips. Got that, Tony? I love that. And you see, with the mobility, he can get outside the pocket. And when he is outside the pocket, best passer rating, which combines all the stats, and best completion percentage. Back screen to Young. Got away from a would-be tackle. Tripped up after the first down by Nick Collins. Get him out to the 37-yard line. A pickup of 13. The extra whistles were to stop the blocking downfield with Al Harris and Brandon Marshall. Excellent job by Jay Cutler setting up the screen. It's a screen left and a screen right. He does a good job of looking left, playing a game with the linebackers in the defensive line, drawing the rush to him, then checking the ball down to Selvin Young. You know, we talk about screens being good offensive linemen in the screen game, a running back in the screen game. It's paramount that the quarterback execute the mechanics as well. Selvin Young gets a break. Andre Hall out of South Florida. We've never carried it till now. 
Welcome to the lead. Brought down by Nick Barnett. Gain of a yard. Hall was at South Florida in his first year. So no Travis Henry, no Javon Walker, no Rod Smith. Maybe that all contributes to the lack of points that they've been able to produce. Let's go even deeper. Their average starting field position last in the league. They've had to go a long way. Points per game low, but yards is six. So, Ron, they move it, but they don't get as much out of it as you should. And, and you said it, Mike, their possession where they start their drives, their own 25-yard line. In this league, you don't go 75 yards very often. And they've only started three drives on the other side their opponents 50. Play action to Hall. Cutler comes back across the middle and it's knocked down. It's a dangerous throw. Nick Collins was there waiting to knock it away. The third year safety was a second round pick out of Bethune Cookman. On that same point, Joss, about scoring, you know, there's a lot of statistics out there total offense, rushing offense, this offense, that offense. Scoring points and giving up points is the only one that automatically it really is that's it, it, that's it, it. it. it's the only many bench so that counts, you can be fifth fourth and third and everything and if you're 28th and scored points doesn't help you but there are reasons why and statistics will give you some reasons why or give you a blueprint of why a team may be struggling to score points you need to get to the 28 to keep the drive alive good pick up and the throw for stokely Brandon Stokely couldn't keep his balance but was hit after he went out of bounds. It'll take it inside the 10 first and goal for Denver. Atari Bigby will get the flag. Mike, what I love about Cutler on this play, we've already broken down some plays of Cutler where he was a thrower. Good mechanics delivering lasers. Here we saw him as a passer delivering the football over a linebacker. After runner was out of bounds, personal foul, late hit, number 20, defense. And that'll take it down to the seven and a half. It's a hard spot for Bigby to stop, but clearly Stokely had a foot on the paint, and by the book, that's a no-brainer. Stokely could be in Hollywood with that type of acting. <laughs> Brandon Stokely. Slot machine. <laughs> and got that slot machine nickname as the slot receiver with Reggie Wayne and Marvin Harrison in Indianapolis. Selvin Young back in. Wrapped up by Bigby on the bottom and Brady Papinga on the top. But a good gain on first down to about the three. To that last play again. Stokely, a very difficult defender. There he is in the slot. You see him coming across the field. Look at this. All the way across the field from just outside the hash. Catches the ball all the way across the field. The play worked because Cutler had time to throw it. And Tony Scheffler, the tight end, into the slot up high. They'll run to Young, who put on the brakes and got brought down. I know the tackle was made by Kabir Baja Biamilla, but Aaron Campman was there to push that one in the backfield, and it'll be third and goal from the five. Well, this is clearly the area of the field, Tony, where the Denver Broncos have struggled. Right. They have a sustained offense down to the red zone, that area inside the 20-yard line. They have not been successful in this area of the field. And you would think they would be because they have a tall, wide receiver in Brandon Marshall. They have excellent receiving tight ends. You would think they would be more successful in this area, but they're not. Marshall lines up behind Glenn Martinez at the bottom. Stokely short motion at the top. And Cutler throws and tackled. Big B, another flag. Pass interference on Scheffler. It'll be first and goal at the one. Excellent route by Scheffler. It was a stick, nod, go. Pass interference. Defense number 20. Ball occurred in the end zone. By rule, the ball is placed at the one yard line. First down. You'll see it right here. Daniel Graham sticks to the outside, nods, and then goes over the middle. And you can clearly see Bigby with the interference. You'll not like one of the great drives for Bigby, who's now contributed two major penalties. He's not going to want to see the replay of the whole drive, Joyce. No, he won't. Cecil Sapp has checked into the game for the Broncos. Always a productive back. Leading the way as Young is tied up by Cullen Jenkins. So you see a play like that, and you go, why in the world take a flag like that in the end zone? Well, you never know what's going to happen on first and goal from the one. Now yeah. it's second and goal from the Colin six. Colin Jenkins, number 77 right here. It's all about penetration. That's how you stop the run. He penetrates into the backfield. In fact, three yards deep in the backfield. Look at that. Colin Jenkins with the great play. <laughs> Ball carrier disappears from sight. <laughs> disappears. Can't find him. Six foot two, 303 pounds, <laughs> Colin Jenkins. That's why ball carriers disappear. Right. And, and Selvin Young at 207 pounds. 
Uh, I think uh, Jenkins had a little bit of a weight advantage. Three tight ends, one receiver, one back. Cutler on the boot. Will he keep it? No, he's directing. Fires it. Caught. Touchdown, Scheffler. Cutler kept it alive. And that gun helped set up the first score of the night. Probably shouldn't say this. That's more scoring than the Rockies got in four games, I think. He just did. <laughs> Excellent job by Jay Cutler. Get him on the perimeter. Extend the play. Once he gets out here, everyone's covered. He keeps moving. Now he allows the receivers to uncover. Good field vision. He finds Scheffler for the touchdown. And to know you have a strong enough arm to stop and make that throw, snap him back. Jason Elam has the extra point. For Tony Scheffler, career touchdown catch five. Cutler very sharp on that 10 play drop. Touchdown catch by Tony Scheffler. Very good drive, and a lot of the passes in that drive by Jay Cutler thrown outside the pocket. He's now thrown 17 touchdown passes in his NFL career. Eight from the pocket, nine from outside the pocket, and he's done it on a lot less throws, just about 44, 45 throws from outside the pocket in his entire career. So he's very good on the move. 7-0 from Mon Williams, the kick return. Brought down just over the 21-yard line. The special team's charge was led by Jamie Winborn and Steve Cargott. Far to take the field. No first downs, no points. Down seven. Series was the last two nights. This beautiful Invesco field at mile high. And much like Coors had a lot of Red Sox fans, significant number of Packer fans in this building here tonight. From the 21 far. Fourth throw. Deep ball for James Jones. Hold in by the rookie who cuts it back to the middle. He beat Champ Bailey on the route and goes all the way to the pylon for a touchdown! <laughs> 79 yards on the score in the cutback by Jones. One of the officials was uh, run into by the players. Didn't exactly see which players it was, but we have one of the officials shaken up on the play. Both medical staffs come out to look at the official. Back to Favre, who throws his 10th touchdown of the season. Excellent job by Favre. John Lynch was down in the box. That means you're going to have one-on-one, -on -one, an isolation route on the outside. You saw Brett Favre do a nice job of looking to his left. That kept the safety in center field, Nick Ferguson. So that gave you the one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Watch Favre. Nice job off the play action. Looks his left, then comes back to the right. Oh, that's just a sweet throw right on the money. Look, we spent a good deal of time talking about Jay Cutler on the first drive, and a very, very nice drive. That, what you just saw, is why people watch Monday Night Football when Brett Favre is on. Because it can happen at any point, he will drop back, and he will do something so spectacular that you'll say, whatever it cost me to buy this set, whatever it cost me to get this cable package, I'm halfway home now, because I saw Brett Favre do that. You know, it was interesting when I looked at the formation. They had James Jones matched against Champ Bailey in a three-wide receiver set, two backs in the backfield. So they tried to create a matchup. So clearly the Packers must have believed that they could get James Jones to run by Champ Bailey. You'll see it right here. There's the play action. It's man-to-man. -man. Just a little stutter there by James Jones that throws Champ Bailey for just a second. Then the cutback. And then the zebra goes down. And he appears to be all right, and James takes it to the house. The back judge, Jim Howey, was the official who was shaken up on the play, and now he's being helped off the field by the Denver medical staff. And let's go down to Michelle on the sideline. When uh, Howey took that hit, Mike, he dropped like a rag doll, and he was lying face down on the field for what seemed like 30 seconds before the medical staff got to him. And he was very slow to turn over. Uh, it, indications are down here his back is in a lot of pain you see him getting helped off there but this is really uh, very rare to see an official take that kind of hit Mike yeah usually if it ever happens Michelle it's the umpire who's in the wash of the play standing behind the linebackers so Howie will be looked at by the medical staff 
they'll go to the formation that the officials talk about all the time where six officials will work the game they'll cover different portions of the field meantime Mason Crosby the rookie out of Colorado adds the extra point our game is tied at seven apiece Joss I thought nobody ever throws a champ Bailey and when they do throw a champ Bailey they don't beat him that guy beat champ Bailey the touchdown pass by Jay Cutler. Brett Favre responds with uh, an answer to those who have saying, oh, does Favre have the arm anymore? Because a couple of passes in their last game, two weeks ago, they had a bye against Washington. He underthrew. And they said, well, wait a minute. Can he still get it out there? There's your answer on that 79-yard score to James Jones. You know, and Mike, pregame, I was standing at the 50-yard line with Brett. We're just talking about arm strength. I'm asking how his arm felt. He said, Jaws, I'm going to put my toes on the 50. See that pylon in the corner of the end zone? Watch me hit it. He threw a laser 50 yards and hit the pylon. His arm is fine. Crosby kicks deep. Andre Hall will take it out this time. Hall ran into his own man, Jamie Winborn, but still gets it out. Just shy of the 29, John Q in the tackle. Well, Favre has had moments on Monday Night Football. One of the quarterbacks to have a 99-yard touchdown pass. Remember that one in Chicago to Robert Brooks and then Antonio Freeman. As our friend Al said, he did what on that play? The 43-yard touchdown as the Packers beat the Vikings 26-20 with an overtime stunner. So Favre has certainly had the big moments on Monday Night Football. He's been on Monday Night Football a lot. <laughs> he owns Monday Night. <laughs> it's been in the league 40 years. He invented Monday Night Football. Come He's on, been around. Buddy. They're good. They've uh, been on a bunch, yeah. right? So much fun to watch. So Cutler and the Bronco offense back on the field. And Selvin Young with a flag down. He gains about eight. Shy of the 36, but we'll check the penalty. <laughs> Personal foul, face mask, defense number 97, 15-yard penalty on the first down. So another major penalty on the Packers. That's three with uh, two pass interferences and the 15-yard face mask. It's kind of fun watching Mike Shanahan, the offensive coordinator and head coach for the Broncos, kind of coordinating this offense. Comes out early in the game with three tight ends, one wide receiver. This drive, he comes out spreading the field with three wide receivers, probing that Packer defense, trying to find a flaw. It's all about the probing, Jim. Probing, that's all correct. About. Cutler, then on that little boot. Very little opening to get to Donald Grant, to Daniel Grant. But a penalty marker is down. As we may have been some holding in the secondary. Brady Papinga was out in coverage. Holding. Defense number 21. Five-yard penalty and a first down. And 21 is Charles Woodson. Fourth first down via penalties for the Broncos. I was going to say, is there, can they get a play where there is no penalty? Yeah, and is he... Uh, Charles Woodson on Brandon Stokely. He loves that position, that press, bump, and run, being physical. You can see right there, he does grab the jersey of Brandon Stokely. And, of course, the side judge will see that. And uh, the officials having to work with six because of the injury to Jim Howie. It's a strained hamstring, the early report from the locker room. So as they work with six officials, Young is tackled in the backfield. And Atari Bigby atones for a couple of the penalties he had in the first quarter with a five-yard loss. When a safety is in that position, making plays in the backfield, that's a play Cutler is going to have to get out of. You're outnumbered. If the safety is getting nosy near the line of scrimmage, you have those one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Take the easy throw. Take the positive play. Don't force the ball where it shouldn't go. A run with a safety sitting up the line of scrimmage. Three receivers, one back. Five in the pattern, and Stokely is there at the 31. First down for Brandon, a gain of 18 in front of Al Harris. 
Cutler sharp here tonight. Excellent job by Brandon Stokely working the route on Al Harris. Al Harris may be the best press corner in the National Football League. When he's off, he's not as good. Stokely got him off on his route, worked the route to the inside, and came back to the sideline. And of course, another one of those lasers from Jay Cutler. Tony, you like that? You like that laser word? I do. Yeah, good. You've always liked Cutler. It's like you're developing a man crush on this guy. <laughs> <laughs> the 31 pressure comes into the lead blitz Cutler got rid of it Marshall didn't hang on incomplete AJ Hawk time the pressure here's who's called for. well guys if you're looking for similarities between these two quarterbacks maybe nobody knows them better than their mutual agent Buss Cook he actually met both their dads first and he said even their dads were alike just good old hard-working guys in our conversation today Buss must have said they're so much alike about 10 times these guys are down-to-earth outdoor guys they like to hunt personalities the same even their mannerisms and the mentality on the field is toughness you can't drag them out of a game and they're so confident in their ability they're not afraid to lose the game they'll take the chance if it means they can win Cutler pressure for the 31 screen to Young he's got room Selvin Young picking up blocks inside the 10 first and goal at the 7 a gain of 24 and a well-timed play call by Shanahan we had a chance to talk to Jay Cutler on Saturday afternoon. He actually showed me the first 15 plays of the game they were going to call. And the screen passes were a major part of those first 15 plays. And you can see he is working them very effectively, working the edge right now of that Packer defense. 13 first downs in this first quarter for the Broncos. Only one for the Packers. Andre Hall is the back, and Hall spinning inside the five as A.J. Hawk pulled at the ball. Hall held on, and we'll have second and goal from inside the two when the second quarter begins. A relatively unknown running backs, a quarterback making his 12th start without the top two receivers. The Broncos offense put up a good quarter, but Favre's home run, the equaling response. Quarterbacks have combined for 11 of 16. They've thrown for 196 yards. And it's been an aerial show with a couple of touchdowns. One from Cutler, one from Farr. After I've always wanted to have a pool. To me, that was... All tied at seven after one. And an impressive quarter from Jay Cutler showing his arm strength. And clearly a big play in that drive that continues right now is to Brandon Stokely. And you'll see the big arm of Jay Cutler. He sets up in the pocket. He's looking to his left. Look at him snap the hips. Look at the ball come out of his hand. Now, oh, hey, baseball World Series just ended. The speed on that throw was 57 miles per hour. That's a major league baseball equivalent of a 96 mile per hour fastball. Jay Cutler can rotate the spheroid. So that's good speed if you're a closer. Or a good starter. Good starter, 96. too. Yeah. Sure. Oh, Absolutely. Okay. Quarter begins with Selvin Young as the back. Cecil Sapp offset. And Cutler lost the football. It's free. And diving in with the Packers, and they may have recovered. They have Nick Barnett diving in to get it. And Jay Cutler, who has had problems with fumbles in those first dozen starts with a mega mistake from the one. So the Packers will take the field. They dodge a bullet. The exchange between Chris Myers and Cutler. Not good. Moving forward, Alltel Wireless. Take the head-to-head -head challenge at alltelcircle.com. And Wrangler, makers of Wrangler five-star premium denim jeans. Back here in Denver, Packers take over the one. We'll show you the replay in a second. You're not going to believe how that ball came out. Deshaun Wynn is the running back. And carries left side, that running game that gives him nothing, gives him nothing there. Nate Webster leading the charge. Here's what happened on the fumble. Now, when the ball is snapped, you'll see Cutler right there. It looks like he's going to look to his left, but the guard there right now, Chris Cooper, comes around in the running play. You'll see it right here. Cooper's right hand comes up and knocks the ball out of Jay Cutler's <laughs> hand. But it looked to me like Cutler was looking out to the left to throw a pass, and it was clearly a running play to the right. That's unbelievable. You never see that, right? Oh, I mean, it clearly Cooper knocked the ball out of his hand. Ryan Grant is the deep back. 
six carries in his career. Pressure pick up and Favre throws for space complete to Donald Lee with John Lynch trying to wrestle it away. It's will the catch at the 16 and a first down for Green Bay. I'll go back to that play, the Denver play for a second, because that in microcosm is a symbol of their season. They march to us all the way down the field. So they pad all their statistics for offense, but they cannot and do not score. That's what's happened to them all year. And it's one of those fluke plays. And another yep. fluke play right there. You get to the yes. yard line, and you got the white play called, and a fluke play with Cooper knocking the ball out of Cutler's hand. Green Bay six plays, one run, five passes. Second run is Ryan Grant left to the 23-yard line. Penalty marker down. It is Grant and Deshaun Wynn as 1-2 in the running game. In their first year of pro action. Holding. Defense number 99. Lineups for the Packers offense from Mark Tauscher, their right tackle. Starting at left tackle, the president of Justin Timberlake's fan club, Chad Clifton. Alaska's finest at left guard, Darren College. Our wide receivers leading the league in yards after catch, led by Donald Driver and Greg Jennings. And of course, our quarterback, Vinny Festiverde's dad, Brett Favre. <laughs> Tauscher is making his 100th start. A former Badger from Wisconsin playing in his home state. Favre on the edge. For Greg Jennings, incomplete. Chased by Karone Cox is Dre Blythe to introduce us to the Denver defense. In this Monday night showdown against the Packers, in order for us to win this game, we must continue to stop the run like we did last week. Our big boys up front must have a big day. And we must disguise our coverages on the back end. If we do that, myself and Chef will have a field day. And we will keep these receivers contained. Champ Bailey could not do that on the second Packer drive. Beat by James Jones with a 79 yard touchdown. Second and 10. Still Ryan Grant in for Deshaun Wynn. And the former Golden Domer runs it shy of the 35 before third and about three and a half, Michelle. Well, Denver safety John Lynch came off the field. He is in some pain. I see him moving his right hand quite a bit, sort of clenching it and letting it go as though there's something wrong. The trainers have looked at his neck. They've tested the strength in both hands, and they've looked at that right arm as well. But you see him there talking to the training, athletic training staff on the bench. And again, just that right hand clenching and letting it go. He's walking to the sideline, but not with his helmet, Mike. Always the first time he's not ready to go back in. The eight-time pro bowler awaits. Third and three with a little bit of room. Pass is complete to keep this drive alive. Once again to Donald Lee, a pickup of six, and here's Susie. Well, Mike, the knock on Deshaun Wynn, who was a seventh-round pick out of Florida, was his toughness. And since early summer, he's been plagued by injuries. That's why he hasn't really gotten a full shot at the starting job. In that first series, he was knocked out, came over to the sideline, couldn't really tell what the problem is, but they were saying it's a shoulder, and now he's questionable. And this is the man, Susie, who they turned it over to, a quad injury in training camp. Injury missing they're pretty much the start of the preseason only getting healthy enough to show well in the Tennessee preseason game and earn a job Denver had personnel issues and because of the secondary confusion Lee gets the first down at the 45 yard line It's a pickup of 14 Denver was running players in and out the injury to Lynch has screwed him up in the secondary Yeah, they only had uh, 10 players on the field and Favre apparently recognized it because he went to the right receiver That's what you got to do in Donald Lee and Favre does a nice real job throwing his left of opening up Ah, uh, Nice, you know, he's not always the best looking guy mechanically but the ball gets to the right guy, and usually accurately. Lee this drive, three catches, 34 yards, including that big one from off the goal line at the two before. Remember this drive started at the one, and Grant runs to the 41. Pretty good job on first down, gaining four. It's amazing that they're actually running the ball at all since they never run the ball. They line up most of the time, right, Joe's, without any running backs. Yeah. Then why? Because Brett Favre, at 38, a living legend, is better than any of their running backs at delivering the ball and getting it downfield. Because even without running backs, they're not going three and out most of the time. They're getting down the field because of far. 72% of their play calling in the first half of their first six games, pass. Ryan Krause 
tight end activated because of the injury to Bubba Franks a couple of weeks ago is in the lineup. And Grant runs into the secondary. Ryan Grant to the 18-yard line. What a drive this is for the Packers. 23 on the game. Corey Hall used to be a linebacker at Boise State. Now the fullback, great block. There's uh, something to point out that Denver is dead last in the league in rushing defense. And any team that can run at all, and we didn't think Green Bay could run at all, <laughs> they but any team that could run at all can do that apparently all day long. It's just a question, can Green Bay find a back that can hold it? Broncos had 12 guys on the field running people in and out, and they're run by Grant. He gives them about six, but they'll take the flag and take first and five at this point at the 12-yard line. John Lynch goes out, and his Denver defense is really out of rhythm right now. And another Bronco shaken up. Let me give credit to the officials who are working with six. The back judge who was injured, one of his jobs is to count the defensive players. So that's a very hard pickup for the officials working with, a, with six instead of seven. The injured player is Antoine Burton, the right tackle out of Temple. And Ron Winters looking over to find out if they want to take the flag for first and five or take the game. Defense. 12 men on the field at the snap. A five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. In time with Burton still down. We'll step out for a second. This Packer drive started at the one. Now at the 12. We've seen over the years Packers travel uh, like the Cowboys and the Steelers as well as any NFL team. Green Bay trying to engineer the second 99-yard drive of this NFL season with a, a bit of a pinch nerve. John, John Lynch awaits on the sideline. Antoine Burton was helped off by the medical staff. First and five after the too many men's line. Old school formation and Grant runs right through the Bronco defense. First and goal for the Packers. Ryan Grant was acquired via a trade with the Giants. He had three carries in the game against San Diego, three in the game against Minnesota. So he's uh, going to equal his entire NFL total here tonight. On the Giants practice squad in 05, he's going to get a look in 06, but injured his hand on injured reserve all the year. And it went over 2,000 yards in his Notre Dame four-year career. Toss to Grant, working right. We'll get to the three. Let's take a peek, guys. When we started, we saw Green Bay with the fewest runs and the most passes in the NFL. One run and five passes out of the gate to start. It has gotten more balanced here as the night has gone on. Mike McCarthy told us the other day when we asked him about the running game, which is dead last in the league said we haven't committed to the run said he believes in a running game in Green Bay Wisconsin in the weather but I won't run just to run but if you can't run on Denver you can't run on anybody they are establishing line of scrimmage right now the Packers offensive line is winning up front they ought to stay with it but they're empty right now no running backs in the backfield on second and goal and far pumps left comes back to the right corner for driver driven out of bounds by champ Bailey incomplete Donald wanted the force out. But the seven-time Pro Bowler pushed him out. You'll see Favre meet me at the corner. Throw the ball to that pylon. Driver goes up. Can't get them both down. Gets neither of them down. Surprising formation. Surprising call. On this drive, the Packers have run, have run the football have run effectively. Yes. They really gave no option of run there when they went with the empty formation. Five wide receiver look. Only Brett Favre in the backfield. That's pretty much telling the Broncos defense we're throwing it. And again, two officials in the right spot with a short crew. Broncos, again, confused on defense. Get the timeout. They had 12 players on the you field. They had 12 on again? They had 12 on the field. Maybe they think they can get away with it. <laughs> this is the second time <laughs> in a minute. And third time on the drive, they had a 10-man on the field situation, and now two 12s. Do you think they know it's supposed to be 11? <laughs> it seems to be going Canadian way. football, is it? <laughs> Packers third and goal, come up. 
five in this tie game. Jarvis Moss, the first round pick, defensive end for the Broncos, inactive tonight, in part because Simeon Rice, the three time Pro Bowler, who's been out with a shoulder injury the last couple of games, is active. Rice, 97, rushes off the right end on third and goal. Far fakes the pass, runs it inside with Grant, who's brought down by DJ Williams. The ball was down. So it will not be a Dre Bly take it all the way. Fumble return. So Grant stopped at the one. This is one of those 98-yard drives for a field goal. And an excellent job by DJ Williams in the open field, making the tackle on Ryan Grant. About a yard short of the end zone. Excellent open field tackle. To no temptation to go here? No. None whatsoever, no. right? Come Take on, the Tony. No, 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 no. Against the worst no, rush no, defense no, in the world? No. Okay. Take three. Mason Crosby beat Dave Rayner in the preseason, picked the game winner in his first ever Packer game against Philly, knocks in that extra point size field goal. 98 yards for three points. Packers take the lead, 10-7. Brett Favre led the drive, his wife Deanna, so much a part of his life, so much a part of the ups and downs. Deanna's going to join us in the booth after this. Mom, what's this? I started a baby book. Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers. Two touchdown passes to Heinz Ward yesterday. Willie Parker, good running game. Steelers are 5-2 and two to take on the 4-3 and three Baltimore Ravens. We can keep the Ravens off their radio shows. We'll see what happens. How about that? Great way to communicate. Coach and player listen to each other on AM radio. Know what's going on. A little controversy in Baltimore this week. Monday Night Football next week, 8.30 Eastern. First time since, 19, since 2002 that a team started a drive at the one, took it to the one, and didn't get the touchdown, just the field goal. No return there, a touchback. So the Broncos will start from the 20. And we are thrilled to be joined by Brett Favre's wife, Deanna, here in the booth. Thank Thanks you. for being with us. Thanks for having me. Author Thank Deanna you. Favre's book, as you see here, Don't Bet Against Me. It's a lot of her story about uh, the battle against breast cancer. And we're so glad that you're doing well. And this being Breast Cancer Awareness Month, the yes. National Football League has had a lot of pink towels. There's been a lot of awareness. And uh, it's part of what you've been doing here this it's month. It's been pretty neat. I'm so appreciative to the NFL, too, for bringing awareness to this disease. We'll talk about some of those efforts as we go forward here. Cutler takes over from the 20, and Selvin Young runs for four yards to the 24. So you were the honorary captain for the Packers, and you got to go out for the coin toss with Brett. How was that? Yes, he was a little nervous. He thought I was going to actually try to call the toy the <laughs> toss. I'm like, I, you didn't have to worry about that. I knew better than that. <laughs> what What is it like, and we see you all the time. We show shots of you during the game. What's it like to sit and watch your husband? play the game it's a little different for me than for you guys it's it's very personal you know it's it's I'm hoping there's no injury um, that's my biggest fear from the 24 second and six and Cutler throws it's incomplete that's, what you, down, that's what you wonder about as as a wife you're watching a different game than we are yes when he does get hit do you follow him after he releases the ball and then gets hit are your eyes still on him I am normally always watching Brett um, I, I tell him that all the time I see every hit I see <laughs> him slow to get up I, I see all of that sometimes I miss the best plays because I'm watching him do you not only see the hits do you feel them I do I do I do Some, <laughs> after the game I always tell him sometimes I feel like I played that game I'm pretty exhausted too that's not just you that's 1500 other women in the National yes. Football League the wives yes. and girlfriends and moms too of all these players <laughs> yes Cutler getting away trying to get space and incomplete that's the poorest drive of the night for the Broncos and they'll go three and out here the Packers will get back on the field so Todd Sauerbrunn will come on to kick it away and Charles Woodson back deep to receive. Didn't have a huge career as a punt returner during his time in Oakland. Only brought 53 punts back in his years with the Raiders. But you think back to when he won the Heisman Trophy in 97. Uh, electric punt returner, including a 78-yarder against Ohio State. They told us last night that when he made that return from Michigan, last time he had a punt return for touchdown. It's been a decade. From the 34, looking for a block. And he'll be taken down. 
at the 41 yard line. Well, Brett Favre has made so many moments on Monday night, and this is one none of us will ever forget. 2003, one day after his dad, Irv passed away, 399 yards, four touchdowns. Every pass ended up in the perfect spot. And Deanna there walking off with Brett after that game. Uh, what sticks out in your mind from that night? That, it, it was so emotional. I, I wanted to be on the field with him the whole time. I just, I felt for him. I felt the pressure that he was under as well. He wanted to play so well. He wanted it to be special for his dad. And um, I, I just felt that pressure during the game and just prayed that he would have a great game so that he could be proud of it, you know, for his dad. Certainly was in the night. None of us will ever forget watching. Fake the reverse action, Ryan Grant, no game. People do remember that game. Everybody rooted for your husband during that game. Everybody was so gratified that he had a great game. Afterwards, when he went home, what was that like? Because now he has played for his dad. Now it's just you and him alone. What did you talk about that night? We flew straight straight to Brett's mother's um, that night. We, we went to Mississippi, and it was tough. I mean, losing your father, um, that was really hard for him. But just facing that reality and, and getting home and seeing everybody, it was, it was very emotional, very hard for the whole family. So second and 10. In the 41, Brett able to get the handoff up to Ryan Grant and a gain of nine yards, third and one coming up. One of the things that everybody knows about Brett Favre and about you as well is the triumphs as well as the tragedies, the illnesses and, and all that goes on. You've chosen now to be a public figure by writing a book, but before you chose to be a public figure, did you ever feel sort of trapped by the publicity? Did you ever feel, I don't want this? How hard was it for you to become public? It was very hard for me. I was a shy little small town girl from Kill, and just being in that situation was tough for me. Uh, I was an introvert. I was not very, you know, social, and it was tough for me. Third and a yard with Grant and a first down to the 48 yard line. A big stick by Nate Webster, but still the drive stays alive. And uh, talk about you guys knowing each other from way back when, back to grade school and on through a courtship. Look at that. Wow. 12 year court <laughs> Archives. You carried him in? <laughs> I love Brett's lie because he said uh, you know, she knew me and loved me before the first touchdown pass was ever thrown. Exactly. He tells me that all the time. You saw my first touchdown pass. I think it's pretty awesome. It is. It's a wonderful part of the story as well. In the 46, first down, Packers leading by three, taking over control of the line of scrimmage. And on the toss, Grant to the right without Deshaun Wynn, who's injured. Champ Bailey off the corner to make a tackle. Well, the record-breaking moment for Favre setting the touchdown mark against Minnesota. Here's what it sounded like on the field. Let's go, Mel, let's go. We can change the game right here. <laughs> with Aaron Rodgers put her in the old vice <laughs> great stuff this is second and eight and a steady run diet here Grant continuing to pound at a first down it's right to the yellow line at the 36 yard line well that ball for the touchdown pass is in Canton Ohio at the Pro Football Hall of Fame where Deanna and Brett and your two daughters will be sometime uh, after Brett's retirement and he's inducted into the Hall of Fame but that's the ball I have to say that every time I know it's pronounced far but every time I see the jersey I think there's a misspelling there did, did, did you Favre. the first time you saw it what did you what was what did you say did you say Favre, Favre? I, I you? knew because I grew up you Next know we went to it? yeah okay. first through 12th grade were at the same school and I saw the name my whole life down there so yeah. so you don't think it's a misprint like the rest of us do <laughs> okay Vernon Morenci is now in at running back and Morenci runs to the left into the waiting arm of Antoine Burton back with that ankle injury. Can I read out of the book for a second? Tony will answer your question. I love this, Deanna. Far rhymes with starve. Don't worry about the order of the letters. Just say it right. There you go. Here's what we book. notice when we see your husband. The incredible impishness of him, the playful quality, the fact that after a touchdown, he'll pick somebody else up and carry him off the field. Is he like that all the time, or is that just the public, Brett? He is like that all the time. At Does home, he pick you up, carry you around I, the house? No, he, he's not picking me up. You know, he jokes about my weight picking me up, and I'm like, if you could pick Donald Driver up, I think you can pick me up. Good on you. <laughs> and his pass is incomplete. Champ Bailey read it. 
and almost uh, pick the pass off. It'll be third down. Deanna, before we let you go, uh, one thing about the book that people should know, and all the guys out there, this is a book about a lot of different things, but it also for the women in your life, your moms, your wives, your girlfriends, there's uh, important lessons in here that could help save lives of breast cancer Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Self exams are, you know, that's where you need to start. We need to be doing those monthly. Even men, we call them peck exams now because men do get breast cancer, and I've had seven men come up to me so far that have had breast cancer. Yeah, so uh, and when you get the book, there's a lot of information in there as well, in addition to a great story. Third and ten. Right at the edge of field goal range here, will be a 53-yarder to Greg Jennings with a move and the sideline and Jennings and the Packers with a first and goal at the 17-yard 20. Will you ask this woman next to us to sit down? Yeah. Well, yeah, if you stood up, you're, you're totally into the game, right? <laughs> I'm still watching the game. <laughs> we're, we're on the field. Well, my husband's on the field. When he threw the touchdown pass early in the game, how did you react to that? You had to ask me that. Yeah. You know, I was on my way up here, so I had to hear it. You missed it? I heard it on my way Let here. Let me tell you something. It was good. Beautiful. I know, I know. <laughs> so uh, our two-minute warning, we say goodbye to you to PTI. We keep, say thank you no, to Deanna. No, keep the Anna, and I'll just leave. It's okay. <laughs> Actually, she she wanted better than I am, prettier than I am, more animated and than I am. I'm better. gone. Cool, I'll tell you that. Go to the shower. Thanks, Deanna. <laughs> Coors Light presents Keith. Stu Scott here in Denver. Chris Berman back in the studio. Toyota halftime show coming up. The, the fastest three minutes with Boomer. All the big highlights from week eight. Part of the interruption with Tony Kornheiser and Michael Wilbon. Before we go any further, uh, Deanna Favre wanted to make sure she said hi to Brittany and Breely, their 18 and 8 year old daughters back in Green Bay. So I told her, just tell the girls it was Kornheiser's fault. <laughs> we didn't give you a chance to we get in. We blame everything else on it, Tony. Using the ground game to get down here. The Packers in the red zone from the 16. Favre screens it to Morency. Morency. Vernon with a flag down gets to the six. Nick Ferguson had a hand in the face here of the former Houston Texan. Went to school at Oklahoma State. Vernon Morency now pushed to the third back behind Deshaun Wynn and Ryan Grant, but a contributor here. Personal foul. In the face mask. Defense number 25. And lies half the distance to the goal and a first down. Mike, a couple things we're noticing. The Packers getting their running game going and their screen game. This is the screen play here to Morenci, and you see the hand in the face to Nick Ferguson. And I had a chance to talk to Brett before the game. Yeah, he talked about the running game being stagnant, but he said, we've got to get our screen game going. It's an important part of their offense. They're starting to get that going. Against this Denver team, uh, Green Bay have only run an average of about 20 times a game already with 14 runs here on the night. So Mike McCarthy has uh, balanced the play calling. Ryan Grant is the back. First and goal. Down here once, only got a field goal. Grant. Pinball off of Ian Gold, shy of the goal line. It'll be second and goal. Farms going quick to keep the heavy personnel off the field, and Mike Shanahan calls a timeout. <laughs> we have 19 guys on the field here for Denver and Green Bay as we're getting both sets of personnel, and Favre is just trying to catch the personnel off. And Shanahan, who used the timeout to ice the kicker, and you talk about the coaches not being able to call timeout. His ability to call timeout there saved his team from having too many men on the field and gives him his chance to get his goal line personnel on. So you say take the rule out for field goals. There it's to Denver's advantage. Right, but you also have a problem here now. You've used a couple of your timeouts. You'd like to have them with a buck 39 left, you know, for your two-minute drill. You're going to go into your two-minute situation with only one timeout. They've had to waste two timeouts because of their inability to get the right personnel on the field. Those are huge mistakes, Mike. Let's take a look at this play. Of course, in the last two minutes, all replay situations are looked at upstairs. And it was clearly a pinball that sent Grant down shy of the goal line as Ian Gold hit him. Grant is a very powerful runner. He runs behind his pads. You can see he delivers the blow moving forward. That's the kind of runner you want in short yardage and goal line situations. Good size at 6'1", 225. Do we have movement up front? Legal procedure. That is a terrible, 
terrible infraction by the Packers. Ball start. Offense number 75. A five-yard penalty. The remaining second down. Tony Moe who got the start at right guard because Junius Costin has a sprained right ankle. Meantime, on that play, Marcus Thomas, the rookie out of Florida who's uh, starting for the second straight night at defensive tackle, got injured. There's the move right there. The Packers come with their heavy personnel where they basically put tackles in at the tight end position. That's why you get the change in personnel in the goal line situation. Second and goal back to Grant for the run. Just a couple of yards. Thomas, who was slow to get up on that last play, submarines low. And Marcus, a fourth-round pick out of Florida with first-round talent, comes up to make the play. And the timeout is taken here. It's to be taken by the Broncos. Again, Mike Shanahan choosing to use his timeouts here to save some time when they get the ball back for their two-minute drill. Either the Packers will get a field goal here. They would take the lead 13-7 with that, or they will score and put Denver down 17-7. But either way, Mike Shanahan wants to get some time on that clock for his two-minute drill. Just so you know, Marcus Thomas, I mentioned he was their fourth-round pick with first-round talent. Denver traded a couple of picks to move up and go get him. He was brought in for a personal pre-draft interview by Mike Shanahan. Thomas had a positive marijuana test in August of 06 in Gainesville. Gainesville. He had signed a contract with Florida to stay clean, do extra testing and curfew. But he went to Orlando on a road trip after a win of a game about a year ago. Somebody took pictures, sent it to the Florida athletic staff, and they had to kick him off the team. That's why Thomas's draft stock fell. But they believe he's going to be a very good player, and Shanahan believed in him after a personal interview. Once again, the Packers empty. No one in the backfield. And we have movement again. Chad Clifton, the left tackle, number 76, moved prematurely. Ball start. Offense number 76. Five-yard penalty. And they start down. Think about the things that have happened tonight, Ron, inside the five-yard line. Two Packer penalties. Here's the one on Clifton. We had Green Bay get down to the one, lose yards on a run, have to settle for a field goal on a 98-yard drive. And for Denver, Jay Cutler from the one has his left guard come over and slap the ball away, causing a fumble. All these plays from inside the five, keeping the score down. I sense a negative trend, Mike. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's third and goal, now back at the nine. And far for the fire. Driver couldn't get to the right spot. Incomplete field goal unit coming on. Actually, Brett Head, Donald Driver, they came with that cluster formation or bunch formation. Three wide receivers tight to the formation. Spaghetti, you sometimes call it. You'll see Donald Driver hooks it up right at the goal line, and this one just got away from Brett Favre. This one had some smoke on it. Woo! Look at him come through that one, but he's wild high, and he knows it. To miss on the quarterback there, right? Pardon me? To miss on Favre. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. No doubt. Crosby on for a second field goal. Good from 19. From 26. So the Packers have had two long, time consuming drives, two field goals to show for it. They lead 13 to 7. Hurry up, kids! Ski in the Mavs. See LeBron in Cleveland, and we'll be here in Denver to hopefully see the debut of Kevin Durant for Seattle against Carmelo Anthony and the Nuggets. Coverage begins with shoot around at 7 Eastern. We'll start you for the season and take you all the way to the NBA Finals on ABC. The NBA season starts Wednesday on ESPN and starts tomorrow night with our friends over on TNT. Wish them the best for their season. 13-7, Packers two long field goal drives here in the second quarter. Another deep kick by Mason Crosby, unreturnable, and the Broncos, no timeouts, will take over at the 20. Here at the top of the hour, those of you tuning in, here's how our games transpired. Favre is 8 of 13, 147 yards, the big one to the rookie James Jones, 79 yards to tie the game at 7. Very good early drive for Jay Cutler, two good early drives. There are his numbers, the touchdown pass to Tony Scheffler. The fumble happened when they got down to the 1, it's really not his fault. The left guard trying to pull, slapped it out of Cutler. Cutler's hands caused the fumble, and Favre and the Packers have controlled the time and the possession here in the second quarter. Cutler with no timeouts and nowhere to go. 
Aaron Pantman, the pro bowler from a year ago, with a one-arm sack back at the nine-yard line. Cutler holding on to the ball far too long. It's got to come out. You'll see right here, Campman working, 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 pushing, gets in the backfield. Cutler actually ran into that sack. He came outside the pocket. Campman makes a heck of a play. It almost looked like a face mask. It was not. He grabbed him by the jersey and the pads, pulled him down. Go back to last year. Only Sean Merriman from San Diego has more sacks than Campman. And, of course, Merriman missed four games with his suspension. Interesting here, if you're Mike McCarthy, you don't want to start giving the Broncos extra opportunities. But you have all your timeouts, and he chose not to try to keep the Broncos against the ropes. That disparity of plays by quarter. Selvin Young runs to the 15. Green Bay will stop it here with a timeout. And 33 seconds left. And third and 15. And if you're just tuning in, Travis Henry, sixth leading rusher in the league coming into this week. Rib injury. Going to give it a go before the game, but out for the game. So Denver's running is turned over to the rookie, Selvin Young. Let's go down to the field and more on Jay Cutler from Michelle Tafoy. What I've noticed about Cutler, Mike, is just his calm and his, he doesn't get phased by things. After the uh, fumble earlier when he was down on the goal line, he came off the field and he just kind of sat down, looked at Polaroids, he pointed at himself like, yeah, that was my bad. And then just even after the sack, he got right back up looked over to the sideline for the play when he was waiting to come back on the field Mike he was joking around with the guys with the Gatorade bottles he is very calm and just having a good time down here you meet him and he's got that uh, laissez-faire appearance to him via his personality but he's all business when it gets going behind Stokely incomplete now you got 30 seconds left Sauerbrunn has a big leg he'll punt the ball if the Packers can get any kind of a decent return they may be a play away from a long field goal attempt. Mason Crosby, their kicker, kicked at Colorado. He can kick them from 55 or 60 yards. So the Packers may have a chance to add three more, depending what the net is on this Sarah Brun punt. Well, Mike, you informed us when you were covering him in college, Crosby, that you saw him at practice kick 70-yard field goals. Big leg, strong kicker. Sarah Brun same. Put the rush on. Sarah Brun skies it. 54 yards, Woodson from the 32, with very little help to block. He's down at the 38-yard line, 19 seconds, and a couple of timeouts. So on this night, we're watching Brett Favre, who is uh, easily eclipsing Peyton Manning as they both continue the meter on their consecutive start record. This 244 for Brett tonight. Most touchdown passes in NFL history. He's added one to that record that he broke week four in Minnesota, passing Dan Marino. And one that matters the most to him is the one that was set by the guy who did a bunch of that winning right in this city. John Elway's 148, Favre now at 152 and working on a six-point lead with a 5-1 and one Packer team before halftime. Vernon Marinci is the back. Five in the pattern. Favre pressured by Marcus Thomas. Slides before the line of scrimmage. A penalty marker down. As he was touched down by Dominique Foxworth. Holding. Offense number 72. 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. It was on Jason Smith's the big Packer play in the first half. This touchdown. And it was Brett Favre off the play action fake. He has James Jones to his right. Looks at the safety, keeps him in center field. Jones with a nice stutter go. This ball in the air. 46 yards from Favre's hand, hands to Jones' hand, and then 39 yards across the field to the end zone. Outstanding execution by Brett Favre's arm and James Jones's legs. The last Packer rookie to catch a pass that long, the reception that long, Max McGee. Late Max McGee pass away. He did it 55 years ago, 1952. Another flag down as Morenci runs to the 39. Chan Bailey the tackle, four seconds left. And we've got another flag. Marcus uh, Thomas down on the field also, Mike. Holding. Offense number 72. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Mentioned the last Packer rookie to have catch that long. Max McGee was laid to rest in suburban Minnesota, in Minneapolis, I should say, yesterday or this past weekend. That one-arm catch from behind. Of course, after Boyd Dowler was injured on the third play of the Super Bowl, and McGee, who legendary storytellers will remind you was out late at night didn't think he was going to play was hung over <laughs> but still went out and made the catch and made the play in Super Bowl won the Packers win 35 to 10.
Favre takes a knee, take it to the locker room. Green Bay gets the ball to start the third. It's 13-7 Green Bay here in Denver. Now Chris Berman, Toyota Halftime Show. All right. Lost a step. It's time to go. Pay them no attention, for we are survivors. Legends write their own stories. My Brett, our Favre. Brett Favre, 8 of 13, 147 yards, a touchdown. The words of his wife, Deanna Favre, who joined us here in the booth in the first half. Favre and the Packer offense to the field first as we begin the third quarter. Here from Invesco Field at Mile High, Broncos trailing 13 to 7. You know what people like Favre so much, and I think on some levels maybe more than Brady and Manning, is because of the vulnerability that he has. That we've seen him both triumph and tragedy, and he reveals himself so much to us all the time. The others understandably hold back, understandably. But Favre has that special everyman quality that few people have ever had in sports. You see him and you say on some level what he's gone through, we've gone through, and, and you identify to a greater degree than with most people in sports. And literally, he's the same guy he was 17 years ago when he came into the National Football League. He's genuine. He's down to earth. The players rally around him. He's one of the guys. Yeah. He, now, he's no, now, clearly, he's not what Brady is now and not what Manning is now. But for so long, he was the face of the NFL. Well, let me tell you what he had in the first half. He had a running game. Ryan Grant, 14 carries, 81 yards. Some of Green Bay's attention to the run game, some of Denver's inability to stop the run. First down, Favre throw to the converted fullback, Corey Hall. Again, a one into the sideline, here's Susie Culver. Mike, the goal for the offense tonight was get the running game going. Mission accomplished. Mike McCarthy said at halftime that 90% of that was about commitment. Finally committing to the run. He said they've also been talking about this for the last 15 days. So here are the numbers finally. 13 passes, 18 rushes for 89 yards. Well, coming in, they averaged 65.7 a game. And actually, they've been kind of thankful for the critics because the guys are really playing with a chip on their shoulder. And thankful to be playing Denver, too. <laughs> yeah. You guys just don't stop people, so you want to emphasize it? Nice when you got somebody who's a willing participant. Left side, Grant. Third and three coming. Michelle Tafoya. Hey, I spoke with Mike Shanahan coming out of the locker room and found out that middle linebacker DJ Williams has torn his uh, latissimus muscle. He's in there going to try to play, but he's having a tough time wrapping up on tackles. Now, as far as John Lynch, the safety, we saw early in the second quarter that he pinched a nerve. They've said since that point that he is probable. He has not yet come back in the game, and that includes most of the second quarter, including a goal line stance. I don't know why Lynch is not in there if they say he's probable, Mike. All right, Michelle, we'll continue to keep an eye on Lynch on the sideline without his helmet here. It's third and a couple of yards for the Packers. And Grant is stopped as a marker down as the pursuit came from Nate Webster and Ian Gold to those linebackers. Holding. Defense number 99, a five-yard penalty, and a first down. Alvin McKinley and a flag on the Broncos that keeps them from getting the ball back on a three and out. So how about the Packers after the first couple of drives, a three and out, then the long 79 touchdown yard pass from Favre to James Jones. After that, two long drives, a 14 and a 13 play drive that only yielded field goals, and uh, here they go on this drive. Kept alive by the five-yard defensive hold by the former Cleveland Brown, McKinley. And that's a second defensive holding penalty of the game by the Broncos' defensive line. From the 33, the pump and the throw is caught by Jones out of bounds at the 49-yard line. A pick of a 16, but there's a marker down back near far. Going to be a hold on the Packers. There is no foul for roughing the passer. Okay. The defender was pushed into the quarterback by a teammate. So the gain will stay, and it will be a pickup of 17. You'll see it here, Favre trying to get the big play, a little pump to the outside, and the go. And a good catch by Jones, who has a couple of big ones. Remember, he was off to a pretty good start this season, shut out against Washington, and sometimes with a rookie, that comes from what happened the game before. Remember the Bears game? He fumbled twice and lost it. Didn't have a grab against Washington. Three balls thrown to him. But the big touchdown and a good pass here. 
tonight. Favre on a play that is messed up goes down at the 41, a loss of eight. Well, he was faking to the invisible yeah, man that there. Was, that, that was and once, from he, the once he saw that nobody was there, <laughs> he decided discretion being the better part of valor. I will sit down right here and end this nonsense. As Grant went to the left, Favre went to the right. There was <laughs> nobody right. there. Grant and the whole offensive line, line went to the left. <laughs> Uh-oh. Feet, get me out of here. That, so, that would give me the impression that Favre went the wrong yeah, that's way. What you said. <laughs> Ryan Grant has played like four NFL games, and Favre started 244. Who screwed up? Right? Jason Spitz is the center, and for Scott Wells, who's missing this game with a sinus infection, byproduct of an injury to his eye socket a few weeks ago. Slipping and falling is Grant, two yards shy of the line. And now the Bronco defense has a chance to make a big play. Third and long coming. At some point, George, you do have to ask, and I mean, I know they're running against the Broncos, but you do have to ask yourselves, did they just forget for six games that they could run the ball? No, they, they could not run the football. They were calling plays, as I said earlier, 72% of their play calls in the first half were pass plays. They, they just did, they, as Mike McCarthy admitted, he, he just didn't do a good job of managing the running back situation. Ruzel Martin, top of the screen. First snaps for him tonight. Third and 19 screen, Morinci. Only a gain of a couple of yards. Champ Bailey started it. Tim Crowder, the rookie out of Texas, finished him off. And the Broncos defense will get off the field. An important drive here at the start of this third quarter. So Glenn Martinez goes back to kick. A good return last time, longest return that he's had all season. Dominic Hickson was the return man for the Broncos the first month of the season, and he was released. That was never rocket. Yeah, never turned over. Even the CFL, they got you a point if you got to do the uprights, but not <laughs> here, sorry. 57 yard kick, no return. Cutler and the Broncos take over at the 20. game in October 2007 in the NFL wrapping up week eight of the season tied at seven after one Packers two field goals in the second first Bronco drive for 24 year old Jay Cutler the 11th overall pick last year's draft out of Vanderbilt play action from the pocket looking long Brandon Marshall comes back to get it game of 26 and a half first down Play action is very effective against this Packers defense. In fact, coming into the game, they had a quarterback rating against them of 138.8 when the other, their opponent used play action. Wow. So clearly, this is the template that the Denver Broncos would like to use. Why would you use anything else? Exactly. 138, 138 when using play action against this Packer defense. After the first first down since the first quarter. 46, no Travis Henry to run tonight. Selvin Young, game six, Sports Center 30 and 30. Set for the update with Steve Levy, please. Michael, baseball news. The Yankees have offered their manager job to Joe Girardi. They're negotiating a contract with his agent. Don Mattingly told the Yanks he is not interested in a coaching position next year. He also extended his congratulations to Girardi. And Cowboys quarterback Tony Romo reached an agreement in principle. Six years, $67.5 million, $31 million guaranteed to stay with the boys. Stay current ESPN News, Sports Center after the game. And then after that, it's NFL primetime, the full recap of Week 8. Cutler hides it on play action. Nothing open, throws it away. Flag down, down the field. Marshall going deep, Al Harris in the coverage, and 25 yards away from the ball, the flag comes down. It was Cullen Jenkins' play or uh, pressure that forced Cutler to throw the play away. Illegal contact, defense number 31, five yard penalty, and a first down. Al Harris. <laughs> Cutler highlights, first half. Yeah, very effective with his movement here. The play action setting up the screen. He looks to his left, comes back to his right to Selvin Young. Move the chains with the screen game. Again, the play action, outstanding fake by Cutler. Then snaps the head around, squares the shoulders, looks for receiver, awaits the time to uncover and delivers the ball. Selvin Young with the carry to the right, gains about three yards. 
to the 40. Colin Cole making the tackle. After that very good start for Cutler, 8, eight of 12. Limited opportunities. The Packers played ball control, and when the Broncos got it, Cutler did not help. They've gone right back to the play action game, which is effective in that first quarter, Mike. Play action will screen out to Cecil Sapp, former Colorado State Ram in the open field, taken down by the Heisman Trophy winner of a decade ago, Charles Woodson. We'll have third and four coming up. You know, guys, uh, how many times have we come here over the years and it's been Greasy or Plummer, Brister, Farrat, Miller, Burline, a, a lot of names. Who's going to be the guy to take the Broncos in the mantle that Shanahan had with John Elway, who was on the Mount Rushmore of quarterbacks for his generation? You know what? Cutler has kind of quieted that talk because they've seen the potential not the results yet it's only his 12th start but they've seen stability and a future and a potential in Cutler Connor Stokely to make a play 33 quarterback draw first down to the 29 yard line and he does a little bit of that when he was good in the first half out of the pocket on the boots the big arm the ability to run and keep drives alive like not in the same class of but like Elway well this is an outstanding job right here because the play call was anticipating man coverage where defenders would turn their back in that third and three situation high percentage man coverage good play call by Mike Shanahan moving the chains for the Denver Broncos that was the fifth time Cutler has run for a first down this year In the 29. The safety valve release to the back Selvin Young, gain of only a yard in front of Nick Barnett. It's interesting, of course, that you would mention him in the same sentence with Elway and say like Elway, but not quite Elway. Every other quarterback that has come in here has suffered terribly in comparison to Elway. The key to how good Cutler may be in terms of the fans liking him is that that's died down around Cutler. And so people are, are sort of willing to believe we don't have to make that comparison all the time because it's odious and this guy may have the goods. I think he's also got the personality to handle the shadow as well. Uh-huh. From the 28, screen set up. Young screen blown up by Johnny Jolly. The six-round pick of last year busts on through. And now it's third and long. But what you're seeing, and we said this in the first half, what you're seeing with Denver right now is what has plagued them all year. They gain a lot of yards from their end of the field to the middle of the field, or maybe further down to the opponent's end, but they don't score. That thing, that when they dropped the ball on the one and killed them, they've been doing that all along. Cutler's been throwing interceptions along with touchdown passes. He's been fumbling as well. They don't punch it in. That play made because Chris Cooper, in for Ben Hamilton at left guard, could not block Jolly. Now third and 15. And Cutler, a rocket shot, is caught at the 17 by Glenn Martinez. First down. Outstanding throw once again by Jay Cutler. The first time he's really stuck the ball from the pocket. He's been looking a little frenetic in the pocket. Here he had Daniel Graham going down the middle against that cover two. And then he had, of course, number 17, Glenn Martinez, coming back underneath. And he threw another laser in for the first down. And now they're in the red zone. And now you see, you know, the, you see if the pattern repeats right. itself. Can they actually get a touchdown here? Well, that's a big conversion on third and oh, long. Sure. They had a moment ago. So at least they get into field goal range. Now can they convert it and take the lead? Fourth receiver, Brian Clark, bottom of the screen. Two receivers, two tight ends, one back. Cutler, nice pass to Young. Or rather, Andre Hall with a flag down. Aaron Campman thinks he was held as he was coming in from that left defensive end spot. Holding. Offense number 64. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat first down. That's Eric Pierce, and he's part of the story of this Bronco team. Eric Pierce holds Campman. You'll see right here, Pierce number 64 on Campman, 74. Clearly spins him around. You're going to get that right in front of the referee standing behind him. He will see that one every single time. I say Eric Pierce is part of the story. He's in his second year out of Colorado State with all the injuries across the front and the turnover in a lot of the skilled players. Eric Pierce is one of the only familiar faces <laughs> from a year ago for Denver. Selvin Young runs right. Tackled by Brady Papiga and a flag down at the 19-yard line. Is there a flag on every player or is it just me? 
and it's the teams. I mean, they are causing these infractions. They've been pretty easy to call tonight. Holding. Offense number 17. Ten yard penalty. Repeat first down. That's the receiver, Glenn Martinez. So Pierce, okay, he started in week eight, the seventh game for the Broncos last year. We'll talk about that in a second. We have an injury on the far side with the Packers. As the Packer player that's injured is down, we'll step out for a minute. I've always wanted to have a pool. To me, that was my dream. If you've ever dreamed of the perfect... ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by Nike. Do you love basketball or do you love famous? Mitsubishi Motors, driven to thrill. Samsung, the official HDTV of the NFL. And the new NFL.com. NFL.com is the only place on the web for game highlights. Check it out only at NFL.com. It's purple everywhere. The logo for the Colorado Rockies adorned on the buildings that look from lower downtown. Just a great area of this Denver city on through the downtown business district the injured player was ryan pickett he was helped off the field not putting a lot of pressure on what appeared to be a leg injury in the interim as he's out it's first and 25 for cutler and the broncos pass for stokely incomplete no flag on woodson second down coming up we'll get back to eric pierce a moment ago i mentioned that he had a penalty flag you go back to the seventh game, week eight last year, Eric Pierce is the only starter on offense who's still starting. Injuries and a lot of roster turnover. Flip it to the defensive side. Only five guys are starting. John Lynch is out for most of this game with his pinched nerve injury. What's the point? You only have a half dozen of your 22 starters in exactly one year, game seven last year to game seven this year, that are still out there. So this is, even though it's a team we always think of as a playoff contender, one of the fourth or fifth teams in the AFC right now, they are a team in transition as well. Cutler second down. Check it down, Selvin Young. To the 20-yard line, A.J. Hawk. There to help on the tackle with Al Harris. I think, of 11. I think I can answer that, Dr. Tirico, if I get the okay. chance. Right. I think. Hey, Dr. Tirico. Uh, Mike Shanahan has a unique relationship with the owner, Pat Bowler. Mike Shanahan can do anything he wants to do. And this franchise, which has won Super Bowls, likes to compete for the Super Bowl. George, you know there's a lot of teams happy to make the playoffs. Mike Shanahan wants to win the whole deal, and he brings players in, and if they don't work, he brings in new players, brings in Dre Bly, brings in Travis Henry, brings in Daniel Graham. He's trying for the whole thing all the time. Brought in John Lynch. This is, he makes a big change at quarterback. If it doesn't work, they try it again next year, and he has the ability to do that. Cutler in trouble in the sights of Pittman, who brings him down for the second time tonight. Seven sacks on the season for the pro bowler who had 15 and a half a year ago. Clearly on Jay Cutler. He had time in the pocket to get rid of the football. He held on to the ball. He held on to the ball. Pierce did a good job on Campman originally. But then all of a sudden, the roof caved in. Sack for Campman. The good news is you have a very reliable field goal kicker in Jason Elam. Playing his 227th game as a Bronco. Only John Elway's played more for this franchise. The 37-year-old kicks from 45. Out of the sour Brunhold. And Elam knocks it through to make it a three-point game. And as you pointed out at the beginning of the show, if not for him, they could be 0-6. That's the best weapon they've got, that guy's foot. Steel City, Roethlisberger, and the Steelers taking on Ray Lewis and the Baltimore Ravens. 8.30 Eastern from Pittsburgh on Monday Night Football. That game for the lead in the AFC North. Steelers one game up for the moment. Cleveland right there with Baltimore. The Packers 5-1 in the NFC North, needing to win tonight to stay ahead of the Lions for the lead in the division. You just mentioned the Browns and the Lions as being positioned to lead in their divisions. <laughs> and what were the odds wow. on that at the beginning of the year? Not so much. A turnable kick for Tremont Williams from a couple of yards deep. And Williams is met at the 21-yard line by Jordan Beck. And he's down there. Penalty marker down right at the spot of the tackle. This will be penalty 17 of the night. Brandon return. Holding. Number 57 to return to. Ten yard penalty. First down. Jason Hunter, the flag. 
for Brett Favre, a long field with 2.54 to go. Do you? Because I think they exchanged the <laughs> I sign think at halftime. I the bunch. I knew you were going to go after it. <laughs> Packers 0-5 here in the preseason, 0-5 here in the regular season all time. Ryan Grant to the left. Gain of seven, tackled by Dominic Foxworth in that Denver secondary. Here's Michelle. Well, that Denver secondary is still without John Lynch, Mike. He injured his neck. They called it a pinched nerve, and that injury took place early in the second quarter. They said his return was probable. Now, that status, according to the Broncos, has not changed. But Lynch has never come back in the game. He has now taken off his shoulder pads. He's wearing a sweatshirt and a knit cap on the sideline. He does not appear to be coming back into this game, guys. Game 218 of his 15-year NFL career. Again, personal running in for the Broncos as Favre comes back to this side. And a hang-on connection for Greg Jennings, who's brought down by Foxworth with a gain of only a couple. The mark, though, is past the 20, and Green Bay will have a first down. Um, where does Brett Favre throw it? Inside the numbers, over the middle, and then outside the numbers, getting to the edges. See, the most in the NFL run inside the numbers first six games, a little flip tonight. Yeah, and it's surprising, but, but you know how Brett Favre is. He loves, loves the challenge. Now he's going after a couple of the best corners in the National Football League in Champagne and Dre Bly, and he's throwing it to the outside. Vernon Morenci is the running back. Favre checks to this throw to Jennings in front of Champ Bailey, gain of three. Once again, you have Champ Bailey on Greg Jennings, and Favre continues to work the perimeter outside of that Denver Broncos defense. Here you'll see Champ right there, peering back into the backfield, reading that triangle, feeling the wide receiver on the inside, looking back at Brett Favre, reading that drop, and getting a quick jump on the football. It's not an awfully chancy pass. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah, with, with a guy like Champ yes, Bailey, he's yeah. looking back in and far, but he sees that three-step drop. He's going to jump the route. No backs, five receivers. Favre to Donald Driver, where he does so much of his work and stretches forward for the first down. Donald Driver, who learned from Robert Brooks how to be a big old physical receiver, does a lot of his work where he just caught the ball. And this is exactly where Donald Driver really works the middle of the field. You'll see it right here. Look where he catches the passes. I mean, it's literally amazing the area he works right in there. That's less than 10 yards between the hash and the numbers to the right side. Exactly where he caught that football. Over the last three years, 71% of his receptions between the numbers on the field by far best in the league for receivers. And now a longer one outside the numbers to Greg Jennings at the 45. First down, gain of 14. Hackers moving the ball as the third quarter spins down. The chess match continues. The Broncos bringing the eighth defender down in the box to stop the run. You have the isolation, one-on-one -on -one routes on the outside. Deanna Favre watching her husband's team didn't score in the third, but they still lead. I'm live with Brian Wang, MVP of the offside training. Elway against Favre, Broncos' first Super Bowl title statistically. Better day for Favre. The magic moment, the Elway spin, the most magic moment, the Super Bowl trophy coming to Denver. Elway only threw 123 yards in that one, but it didn't matter. He had the one that mattered the most. And Mike Shanahan and company get that title. To the fourth quarter we go. Far from the Packers, leading by three, first and ten at the 45. One back set, running out of it, a gain of five with Ryan Grant. Well, for the quarter century, it'll be Montana, Marino, on that Mount Rushmore quarterbacks, Elway, and certainly Brett Favre will be there as well. The comparison of these guys and their wins, they've combined for 300 wins. Favre with more touchdown passes, the three-time MVP of the league, and the couple of Super Bowl appearances, one title, Elway, the two Super Bowl victories. What's nice about that is they had a chance to face each other in the Super Bowl. Yeah which Tom Brady and Peyton Manning won't do, remaining with their teams that sure. exist now. Nice for Elway and Favre, 
guys who compare themselves to each other. Manning and Brady are playing the half Super Bowl <laughs> on <know>. Sunday. <laughs> Play clock out. Favre didn't get the timeout quick enough. Yeah, the Broncos were showing blitz zero coverage man-to-man -man across the board. They were going to bring seven, cover the four wide receivers. Man-to-man, -man, Favre was trying to get out of it. Delay a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Remain second down. Packer penalty number 11 tonight. One of the nice things that uh, that Favre was talking about here, yesterday, as you talk about a lot of different quarters, oh, you want to take it to us? Yeah, here we'll we'll right here. Here, here right you're looking man-to-man, 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 man-to-man. The pressure was going to come. Favre was trying to get out of that play to attack that man-to-man -man coverage, but the clock ran down to zero. Similar personnel, different defensive look. Second and 11. And Favre swinging it out with Grant. Submarine by Dre Bly and Ian Gold into Denver territory with third and about three coming up. Just to finish the thought about the kind of quarterback that Favre is and Elway was and Manning and, and Brady and people like that. Favre is unique in this regard. Here's a direct quote. I always felt like I didn't need anyone else. That was part of the beauty and the ugliness of my career. I always felt like I can throw it in there. I can make a play where there's none to be made. Love to hear that. The beauty and the ugliness of my own career. Favre's hit all nine this half. Driver's the man in motion. Favre looks his way. It's covered. He lost the ball and gets it back as Elvis Doomerville touches him down. And the loss will force the punt. It just slipped out of his hand. That's simple. There's a little pump fake. Now he resets. Going to throw it. Whoop! The ball just comes out of his hand. Remember we saw that two and a half seasons ago when Favre had the season-long thumb problem. It seemed like right. once a game the ball would come out on that yeah, pump. And that was funny. one of the, the early years when people wanted him to retire. It was like three <laughs> different <laughs> decades when they wanted him to retire. He's still out there, still doing well. See John Ryan can pin his team inside the 10. Martinez will let it go and roll straight over. And a penalty marker thrown on the contact after the 54-yard kick. So let's check this flag. If he signaled for fair catch, yes. he cannot block. That's right. And he picked off Aaron Rouse. I'm not sure I saw the, the, the hand go up. Neither am I. And again, we are using six officials here since the touchdown in the first quarter after the injury to the back judge, a hamstring injury to Jim Howie. So one less than normal, but still plenty of flags. There is no foul for interference with the opportunity to make a catch. The receiver did not signal for a fair catch. So the Broncos will take over at their own 20, and when we come back, joining us to watch the drive is the actor Vince Vaughn. Funny man joins us here in the booth in Denver. We are joined by Vince Vaughn, who brought his four-year-old nephew to see the first Monday or first football game for him. That's right. I'm sorry if I'm a little distracted. The cheerleaders just got done doing a routine <laughs> with the altitude up here. I'm terrified one of them might faint. I was just going to make sure they were all okay. Yes, my nephew's here. Uh, Dexter, it's his first game. So uh, uh, he's down there waving stuff. He's having a good time. And you are as well. This is a great game. Oh, so far. man, unbelievable. Yes. What a great stadium. This is uh, my first time here. It's impressive. And a franchise record crowd of 77,160. Watching Cutler find his tight end, Tony Scheffler, who's becoming one of his favorite receivers. Gain of a dozen and a first down. Cutler was the guy who was like big on the bench press, right, at the combine. Wasn't he like the quarterback that also like benched like an offensive lineman? Yeah, you know, all the quarterbacks are now. Yeah, just like you, Josh. Cut and ready. I understand, Josh. Yeah. up. <laughs> are you a big uh, combine follower? <laughs> Um, I wouldn't say I'm a big combine follower, but I do go through and I, and I do like to watch that NFL network sometimes and, and catch up on uh, who could be good as a draft pick. You're supposed to mention us. Not I love the ESPN. Yeah, yeah. I'm here. Thanks, 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 job, Vince. Here's Cutler under pressure getting rid of it. And he threw up a 50-50 ball that almost turned into an interception. And those are the balls, Jaws, that you talk about that a young quarterback can't put up in the fourth yeah, quarter. And, and Mike, in the pocket, he looks a bit unsettled. He's been very good with the movement, the stuff outside the pocket, but he's not settling down. Watch him here. He'll set, he'll feel a little pressure, begin to drift backwards, feels that pressure, a little cabin fever, and actually Stokely makes a heck of a play here. He's falling backwards, almost far of like, but you just don't want to make this throw, and Stokely saved the interception. But he has not been comfortable in that pocket. Those are the throws I make when I put it on all mad, unfortunately. <laughs> Second and ten. 
lands in and throws Stokely. Did he hold on? Yes, he did. At the 48, gain of 16, first down. Good throw there. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to talk to you about football in that regard, the throws that you make. Everybody saw you in wedding crashes. Yes. Everybody saw you take shot after Rap shot. in football, that's what Maryland does. Okay. <laughs> Did you take those yeah, shots we need for to real? Know. Okay, now I took a few of those hits. I know it's very fashionable now for actors to be like, yes, I took those hits. I'm proud to have a stunt guy who steps in when it gets <laughs> <it> up. <laughs> I'll give him some kind of high five. I stand up, brush myself off, and stuff. You know, in Invincible, uh, Mark Wilberg was very proud that he took all those hits. The 48 7 Young to the left with room. Young, a first down. And still inbounds. Selvin Young. First and goal with a marker down. Downfield at the 34 yard line. Got some rules. Will it come back for a wide receiver hold? If not, gain of 48. It'll be first down. You'll see Selvin Young get to the outside. Brandon Marshall blocking downfield on Al Harris. Wow. Wow. Not sure right here. He's number 15 on Al Harris. Check out the hair on Al. You can spot him. Wow. That's a bit ticky tack, my friends. It just looked like a little bit of claw. If you saw anything up by the shoulder pad. Wow. They'll be playing flag football if they call that holding. So it happened downfield. Bring it back. So it remains first down and two. You usually don't see that, but it did remain first down. And this carry by Andre Hall will give Denver another first down the 41 yard line. Go back to Vince. Enjoying the game. I we had to stop you there because close, it looked like a touchdown. It's a close game here, and uh, it's it's uh, Favre's been having a great season. I'm a Bears fan, so he's beaten us many times. But he's such a great quarterback. It's good to see him playing. We didn't know if he was going to quit. It was like the judge for a well tour for a while with him, right? <laughs> he's going to stay. He was going to go. But he's having such a great year. It's, it's great to see he decided to play. And what has happened to the Bears? Yeah. That's one of the big. Well, they got some the injuries and going through some stuff, but. I really uh, like Levy Smith. I think he's a good coach. Chicago three and five. Marshall lined up in the backfield. He might throw it back to Cutler. He's looking for a place to get free. His play's still alive, and Marshall keeping the play alive. Got away from Campman. Now picking up blocks. That's a lot of work for a loss <laughs> of two. I was going to say, where's the Stanford band? <laughs> the way that was developing. Looked like Trinity out there. Yeah. Aaron Campman did as much running as Marshall did. Watch Campman and Marshall on this play. Campman number 74. He'll chase them back. Now he's on the ground. Going to get back up. <laughs> on the ground again. Get back up and chase them. That is effort. <laughs> Here he comes and makes the play. In the old days, in the wide world of sports, that would have been rodeo. They're just trying, they just couldn't get him down. You know, I see one of my dear friends, Carl Hairston, on the side of the coaches of the D line in Green Bay, and he said Aaron Campman has been grading out at 100% this season, playing terrific football. Went to the Pro Bowl last year, playing at that level again this year. Cutler will take a timeout. 9 11 remaining, fourth quarter. Vince Vaughn joining us in the booth. Denver trying to drive for a game tying field goal. GMC, official vehicle of the NFL and proud supporter of those who want it more. Miller Lite, for award-winning taste, there's no debate. Miller Lite, good call. IBM, when you're ready to stop talking innovation and start doing, visit IBM.com slash do. And Verizon Wireless. Some of the images of this final Monday in October in a place where they were calling it Rocktober because of the Rockies' success. And now it's back to Broncos country. On that long play a moment ago with Aaron Campman, since Brandon Marshall was looking to throw and Jay Cutler went out to be a receiver, it's technically a sack. So Campman is three on the night, eight on the season. Oh, this is flag 20 of the night on Matt Lepsis. Ball start. Offense number 78. Five yard penalty and remains second down. Let's go back to that last play with our player tracks. We said it was a lot of running for three yards. Look at the player track. It's something between a map of the U.S. and a Colorado Buffalo without the horns and the steer. Look at this. Or a Buffalo Bill. True Buffalo Bill. But in Colorado, it would be a Colorado Buffalo. 
and our our scientific crew says that was 70 yards of running for a loss of three. A scientific crew? <laughs> we bring a lot of people, Jaws. <laughs> Junior college graduates, Jaws, pay no attention. After the flag, second and 18, Cutler, dangerous shot through the middle that was almost a Nick Collins interception. It's incomplete, and a flag thrown well after the play. And it's going to be on the Packers. Sorry, Bigby. Delay game. Defense number 20 for the third time tonight. He kicked the ball. I think he kicked the ball. That is his third major penalty. That'll just be a five, so it won't kill him oh, okay. as the other ones did, but delaying the game. See ya. World Cup, it's gone. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> you told me David Beckham was going to be on the field. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Bend it like Bigby is what uh, the right. sequel movie is going to be. I think that's the first time I've seen him play since he's been here. The voice of Vince Vaughn joining us here in the booth. Aaron Rouse, the rookie out of Virginia Tech, checks in. It's third and 13. And Cutler's pass is caught. And brought down to Selvin Young at the 37. That's a 55-yard field goal for Elam. So what will Shanahan do on fourth and about five? Punt. Excellent job by Nick Barnett in the open field tackling Selvin Young. Nick Barnett having one heck of a season. The fans react. I think mean, they wanted him to go for the field goal. Hey, hey, it's too early. It's like eight minutes too early for Elam to kick, right? <laughs> Every game they've won has been an Elam last play of the game, game winner. Wilson will let it go, and Sauerborn does his job. Pins him inside the five. That's an impressive kick there. Yeah. You have to do. Carone Cox downs it at the three. 97 yards for Farm and Company after Sauerbrunn pins him inside the five. Just a couple of evenings away, but a beautiful shot over downtown Denver. And fans in all their glory. Long field for Farm and the Packers. Far from his own end zone, complete to Greg Jennings. Second time Far is thrown from his own end zone and create a breathing space to the 21. Gain of 18, first down. Clearly, it's nothing for Far to be backed up like that. They went 99 yards for a field goal earlier. This would be 98. Easy piece of cake. Nice job by Far once again off the play action. The Broncos committing at eighth defender of the box. You have the one on one on the outside. Greg Jennings beats Dre Bly. Another throw outside the numbers on these corners against the norm thus far this year. Favre is 10 for 10 in this second half. Ryan Grant, loss of a couple of yards. Nate Webster with the push. You have a movie coming out. Fred Claus, yes. kids movie, right? It's a, you know, it's the same director as Wedding Crasher, so it, it turned out really funny, and, and adults really like it, but it's good for kids, too. It's a PG movie. Uh, the comedy comes more from kind of a smart place and going like Crashers, though, which is more of a kind of a shocking place, but really, everyone's really enjoyed the film. David's such a good director, did such a good job with Wedding Crashers. Wedding Crashers, not necessarily a kid's movie. No, 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 <laughs> not, not, not Crashers, but Trey right Claus is. Second and 12. Grant lost yards, and now it's 96 on the night. Trying to get to 100. It's going to be third and 11 coming up as the Broncos stack it up and make the play. Well, Vince, thank you. We enjoyed having you up oh, here. I enjoyed it. Thanks for, thanks for having me up here. I'm sorry about your Bears, but we like you. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And the Bears, the Bears will be back, my friend. Good to see you. Enjoy watching your show. Right. John, it's a real thanks, pleasure. Oh, my thanks, pleasure. pleasure. Yeah. Nice talking to you guys. Vince Vaughn joining us here in the booth. This crowd will get loud with third and nine, trying to get the Broncos back with the ball in good field position. Gets a three-man rush with eight in coverage. Far finding a hole. Caught. What a grab by Driver. Went up to get it at the 39. First down. Gain of 17. 
Outstanding play by Brett Favre against the three-man rush. In other words, the Broncos are now dropping eight in the coverage. Early in the down, the Denver Broncos win. Late in the down, Brett Favre and the Green Bay Packers win because Brett Favre was able to extend the play with his legs. Two big throws, one from out of the end zone, one on third down. Favre all 11 here in this second half. Grant with a gain of three yards gets him over 100 yards. You have to go back to Amon Green last year to find the last time that a Green Bay running back had an over 100 yard game. But back to the clutch catch by Donald Driver. Once again, Donald Driver is outstanding at working the middle of the field. Here you'll see him push up against his own. Comes around Foxworth, looking for the hole, settling in the hole, hoping that Brett can find him. Brett does, and he goes up. And he is a fearless receiver in the middle of the field. That's what you have to be, because you're going to get hit. As we said in the first half, credit to Robert Brooks, who was here when he was breaking in the league nine years ago for teaching him how important that skill is. Inside of five minutes now, fourth quarter. Favre, another first down throw. Takes it to the 45-yard line with James Jones. Once again, Favre doing an outstanding job of manipulating the linebackers of Denver Broncos. He pump takes to the left. That forces the linebacker number 58, Nate Webster, to vacate his area, and Favre comes back to the right. Pump to the left. You see Webster move inside. He comes back to the outside and hits James Jones with the throw. Once again, excellent job by Brett Favre. James Jones over 100 yards receiving. Ryan Grant over 100 yards rushing. Two rookies or two first-year players. Jones a rookie third-round pick. Grant traded by the Giants before the season started. Grant runs. Gain of two. Tackle Simeon Rice. Susie Calber on the sideline. Well, because of Brett's gunslinging style, the thing he never gets enough credit for is his intelligence and his preparation. Steve Mariucci, who was his quarterback coach in the early days with the Packers, says even in his wild and craziest days, he was incredibly diligent. They lived next door to each other, and Brett would insist that late on Tuesday night, Moots bring home the playbook so he could see it as soon as the plays were installed. Couldn't wait till Wednesday morning, and Moots said as long as he's known him, he works every Tuesday, which is the players' off day. Just doesn't get enough credit for the hard work, too. Mike McCarthy has lauded that as well as pregame preparation. Grant will lose a yard, drop back from 104 to 103. Ryan or Ian Gold over there to make the tackle along with Antoine Burton, shaken up earlier. Favre and Mike McCarthy go back to 1999 when McCarthy was an assistant with the Packers. It's helped build a relationship here in the last two years. Near perfect balance tonight. McCarthy told us, I know you're looking for drama between me and Brett, but there is no drama. He's easy to coach. Mega play, third and ten. And here the Broncos coming with their four-man rush, so they'll drop seven into coverage. Far getting rid of it quick. Ooh, dangerous throw. Champ Bailey was sitting there waiting for James Jones. So here you have fourth down and ten. Elvis Doomerville made the pressure. Favre's first incompletion of the half will give the ball to the Broncos. And Bar Favre drops back and just gets the elbow hit as he's delivering the football. He may be lucky. Yes. Champ Bailey played inside because he had help over the top. A good throw may have been picked off by Champ Bailey and taken to the house for a Broncos touchdown. John Ryan has uh, failed in trying to pin it inside the 10. This kick has a little better chance, so Martinez calls for and makes a fair catch at his own six. So in the city where Elway had all the two-minute drives and Favre here, who's had all the two-minute drives, Jay Cutler's turn to take him down the field. What's behind the grill? A really good one here at Invesco Field at Mile High. What's at stake in the AFC West? With a victory, the Broncos will join the Chiefs and the Chargers at 4-3 and three in a three-way tie atop this division. Denver has a tough stretch. Four of their next five are on the road. Their only home game in that stretch of five is back here on a Monday night in three weeks against Tennessee. So a lot on the line on this drive. Starting from their own seven and starting out of the gun with Cutler. 
J. Lofton went up for the tight end. Scheffler, pass interference on Big B. His fourth flag of the night. And 13 on the Packers this evening. Pass interference. Defense number 20. Penalizes the spot of the foul. And a first down. Jay Cutler recognized the size mismatch. He has Scheffler at six foot five against 5'11 Bigby. He throws it up, hoping Scheffler can make the play. He does not, but he does get the interference call. Atari Bigby in his second year out of Central Florida has struggled tonight. Back under center to run Selvin Young left. No gain. Nick Collins comes crashing down to stop him. Denver not running up to the line and will spin it down to the two minute warning. So the Denver Broncos who have three wins this year all three coming on field goals on the last play of the game by Jason Elam might need an Elam field goal to send this to overtime. On it's second and ten with the two minute warning. Denver has two timeouts remaining. Broncos now using their three wide receiver set. Much more aggressive approach right now. Man coverage top and bottom. Cutler looks middle and it's caught by Martinez. The 29 yard line. It's going to be incomplete. Incomplete. Come in and say the umpire that it would hit the ground and, and not much protest for Martinez. Third down coming up. KGB Kabir Baja Biamila may have deflected this. With his elbow. He sure did. The Packers have 10 batted balls this season, with Colleen Jenkins has seven, excuse me, 11. Johnny Jolly has four. They get their arms up, so Kabir just chips in with one there. Look, look very close to Martinez getting it, but upstairs they choose not to stop it for review. Third down and 10. Cutler's throw to Stokely is a catch. Did not get out of bounds, and now we have fourth down. We have fourth and about two and a half coming up in front of Charles Woods in that grab. Shanahan's going to take time out. Got to do it there. Pretty much game on the line when you come back. Fourth and a couple. Sports Center next. GMC Monday night post game here with Steve Young, Emmett Smith, and Stu. Start looking ahead to Indianapolis, New England, and the Yankee deal. Fourth and a couple. Jay Cutler trying to engineer a game-winning drive. This is career start 12. He's done it three times, thanks in large part to Jason Elam. But this is fourth down and two. Ron, what do you see? High percentage man-to-man -man coverage by the Packer defense in this situation. Now the mobile ability of a quarterback becomes very, very important. I would like to see Jay Cutler move or maybe even a quarterback draw. Ball game on the line for Denver and Green Bay. Fourth and two. High snap brought in Stokely won the battle without Harris first down at the 39 yard line man to man coverage you got to win the battle Stokely did it against a very good corner in Harris that's Keeps why he's alive. called the slot machine you put him out there you get him the one on one you'll see Cutler hang in the pocket he eyeballed Stokely all the way this was purely a route designed to get it to Stokely you know, it's about 65,000 people here maybe even more <laughs> when they see six on Cutler they're hoping for seven in Elway when they see a throw like that gives them hope absolutely two safeties behind the man coverage you see on all three receivers Linebackers dropping his cutler throws for Stokely who wants a flag saying he was held. So does Mike Shanahan. None coming. Aaron Campman knocked down Cutler. And believe it or not, the Packers blew the coverage. Brandon Marshall was wide open coming up the left side. You'll see Campman right here. Another good move on Pierce. <laughs> Quickly in on Cutler. Pierce got to do a much better job jamming at the line of scrimmage. Aaron Campman can uh, get ahead of the airfare and book an early flight to. Hawaii for the Pro Bowl. Oh, yeah. Going back with another night like this. Three sacks, eight on the year. Buck 27 left. Second down. Blitz picked up. Brandon Marshall flag. Down yeah, Marshall. Stays on his feet. Big runner. Marshall all the way to the 26. We'll check the flag. If it stands up, the game is 35. And they're in Elam's field goal range. And for all the world, it looks like Hold contact with Harris and holding against the Green Bay Packers. It looks like Fight of the pass. Holding. Defense number 21. 
Brandon Marshall who is a huge receiver at six foot four 230 telling us he's so used to using his body and getting close the flag was thrown at we believe on Woodson on Stokely according to the penalty call not Harris at the 26 in field goal range one timeout 76 seconds left Cutler Marshall again picked up a block from the tight end Daniel Graham A.J. Hawk awaits and brings him down at the 13 yard line clock turns inside a minute you don't want to give far the ball back either right a lot of time on the clock ticking at 55 seconds right now Denver still is a timeout there's no need to panic for the quarterback Jay Cutler right now remain calm Ryan Clark receiver at the bottom of the screen Stokely in the slot can run here they will the rookie Selvin Young trying the back door keeps the run alive Selvin Young to the three yard line first and goal may want to take a timeout here if you're Denver and they will with 24 seconds remaining this is a patented stretch play by the Denver Broncos good penetration by the Green Bay Packers this is all Selvin Young making people miss taking it down to the three yard line outstanding vision good feet good quickness ability to shed a tackler look at the vision look at the strength of the legs of Nick Barnett with the miss almost takes to the house Selvin Young big play and again Young is only playing because of Travis Henry's rib injury there's the possibility of a one-year suspension for a third positive test with the league substance policy with Travis Henry that is in the court system there'll be a review next week the point of that is Selvin Young might be the back for the rest of the season for the Broncos we're not sure but this rookie out of Texas came out and has made a great play and now Jason Elam the MVP of the year for the Broncos knows his team has no timeouts remaining so everybody's got to be aware on the sideline usually you don't make a mistake here and you're smart about killing the clock but you have to be aware just in case you have to scramble out. exactly you're still okay with 24 seconds to run anything you want every play is available right now in the play selection book because you can still get up and spike the football Ron Winter thank you you're welcome <laughs> resetting the play clock at 25 it's second and one for a first down three for a touchdown Cecil Sapp is the back next to Cutler Cutler throws for Marshall incomplete tried that back shoulder throw on Al Harris but there has not been a lot of good news here in Denver you mentioned what may befall Travis Henry there's a lot of injuries John Lynch lost in this particular game. Everybody knows that Darren Williams was shot to death on New Year's Eve following the last game of last year. Damian Nash had a heart attack at a basketball game. The Broncos carry all of that with them. They are looking for a big win here. Glenn Martinez and Stokely go to the top. Bottom of the screen is Marshall. It's third and one. Cutler will run it. Didn't get the first down. Now there's 16 seconds left. A lot left. of time. Get the field goal team out. A lot of time. And clock is running. And now the scramble is on. As players come in and out, we're down to eight seconds. You're okay. No problem. Elam knows it. They're set up. The Packers are clear of the field. This for the tie. Snap. Hold. Tie game. We go to overtime in Denver. Of course Elam was going to do that. Of course he was going to run out. And at the last possible second, either tie or win the game. That scramble drill on both sides as Cutler runs to try to get the first down. Doesn't matter if we got it or not there because they're out of time and they're out of timeouts. So here comes the personnel in and out. Cutler, you got to be ready, bud. Here comes seven Broncos on, seven Packers. And as the time runs down, Elam, like he's kicking back, getting a manicure, yeah. walks out there and just smooths it to send us at 13 to the fifth period. Mike, I was a holder for 15 years for extra points and field goals. 18 seconds is the cutoff to get your kicking team on the field and get your offense off the field. The Broncos executed it to perfection to tie this game up. To Ron Winner's microphone for the overtime coin toss. Okay, captains, for overtime, 
is fourth quarter timing, and each team is entitled to two timeouts. Green Bay, it's your choice. He called heads. It is heads. Green Bay has won the toss. He likes to receive. It'll be Green Bay ball. The Broncos played one of the few overtime games thus far this year. They won at Oakland. Elam the hero again. Second involving the Broncos. The Packers have lost their last four regular season road overtime games. Their last road overtime win was in Tampa on, in 1983. It was the last game Howard Cosell announced. Wow. It's been a long time since they won an overtime game on the road. Todd Sarabur kicks off to start off OT. Run in by Botiford. Sean is upended at the 17-yard line by Andre Hall. And now Brett Favre walks on to the overtime stage. Now, if you believe in all the rules of drama, Brett Favre is the to either win it or lose it. You know what I mean? He either makes some great touchdown pass or he gets intercepted. He won it in his hands. He's been a star for so long. This seems to this stage would seem to suit Brett Favre. Ryan Grant, the running back. Play action from the 18. One and all. Deep down the field. It is holding oh. by Greg Jennings. The Packers How win it over time. Unbelievable. Jennings and the Packers are six and one. Once again, off the play action, Brett Favre. He knows he's got the single receiver to the outside, the isolation route. Greg Jennings beats Dre Bly. An outstanding throw from Brett Favre. The ball came out of the sky. This thing hung up in the air. Who said Favre doesn't have the car, the arm, the cannon? Look at him. He's excited. He's got it. This is exciting for Fred Favre. What Once a way again. to end a terrific football he's game. The guy, he's the guy you want on this stage. He beat Bly once in the game. He beat Bailey once in the game. As you said, Jaws, he had underthrown passes last week against the Redskins. You stood out on the field with him. You said he put his toes on the 50 and hit the pylon with a laser. So the arm is still there. No problem. Who else would you want on center stage in a circumstance like that? And in one play, boom, ball game. And Deanna Favre, who was with us and has been with Brett every step of the way and seen all the highs and lows with another scrapbook moment in the legendary 17-year career of the guy who's 38 and acts like he is eight. Favre does it again. The right there is why you love Brett Favre, that little kid enthusiasm, that passion to play the game. You'd love to see him continue to play. Jaws threw the longest overtime pass in NFL history to Mike Quick, 99 yards. That is the second longest pass to end the game in overtime in NFL history. It ties it at 82 yards. You held out on us, Jaws. You never bragged <laughs> about that. The oh. Broncos fall to three and four and go to Detroit next week. The Lions a game behind the six and one Packers, whose dream season continues at Kansas City next week. With Susie Culver, Michelle Tafoya, Tony Kornheiser, Ron Jaworski, I'm Mike Tirico. We'll hear from Favre and all the big people involved on Sports Center coming up next. Good night from Denver. Steelers Ravens next week. See you in Pittsburgh.